Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Beal. Any other questions from the commission? And speak up because I can't see any other commissioners very well, so. Okay, seeing and hearing none. Um, it's the applicant's turn to ask questions of staff. Does the applicant have any questions uh, to Mr. Uh, Hussein? Yeah. If you have any questions, yeah, sure. I, just questions on his testimony. You'll have an opportunity to testify for yourself if you have any questions regarding what the director said. I have a question. Uh, so when we got this, uh, when they put in the permit for this, one thing that the city asked for was a lockbox for emergency yeah. or police. That, and fire. I, I have to interrupt you. Okay. I cannot Regarding tell you this testimony. Let's, well, I'm asking him a question. Point, point of order, point of order. Let's, let's identify who the uh, person asking the question is and please approach the podium. So I'm asking him a question from here. Based on his testimony, but you, the right. chair would like you to identify yourself That's fine. for the record and then go make the determination. Of this uh, good evening. My name is Nathan Ortiz. Uh, I live in Los Angeles. Um, so I have a question for the um, planning director here. Um, so when we put in the uh, put in the application to do these gates, uh, the old planning director, we, he gave us a list of items that needed to be done. One of the things the fire department asked for was a lockbox. That's exactly what they asked for. So they got 24 seven access to the place. Now you're telling us, I just want to know who, did the chief say that he didn't want the lockbox? I'm just waiting for you to come up with them saying that they didn't, that they didn't, I'm just you come up with them saying that they didn't, but when they told us it was sufficient. So uh, the fire chief, uh, the fire marshal, and the fire chief were part of the development review team. And they had the opinion, and you can see at the part of the packet if you go online, their remarks are written with their signature. So it's the fire chief and the, chief, uh, the fire marshal. And just one more question: This committee, all it is, is a recommendation to what we're asking for. Correct. The mayor and the full council is the final decision. So Correct. it's just a recommendation. Correct. Thank you. And how is this, how is this going to change with the new administration coming in? Are we going to have to do this again? No. This is a very touchy subject. Are, are there any other questions from, from neighboring? Okay, so we have the applicant. Did the applicant have any questions? Yes, he's standing there, Mr. Chair. Can you see me, uh, Mr. Martinez, Tony Martinez? Uh, yes. Okay. You have questions uh, for Mr. Hussein? Uh, at this moment, I do not specifically for Mr. Hussein. But uh, well, I do I actually do have one specific question for Mr. Hussein. Um, there was a uh, multiple communications prior to this meeting regarding the you know the, the intense emotions around this. This subject, and uh, I know at the beginning of the meeting you mentioned that you uh, had been there, but no longer had any interest in the property, meaning that you sold your property. Um, but you failed to disclose, and we uh, disclosed many times prior to this meeting with Mr. Hubbard, the prior director, as well as the current director, regarding the lawsuit um, you, that was filed have, against the Los Angeles Association. What's that? Do you have a question for Director Hussein? Yeah, I'm just wondering why from the very beginning, uh, Mr. Singh, uh, that Mr. Martinez uh, was not asked to recuse himself uh, from the meeting. So uh, as an as a advisory staff, we, just recommend, we cannot recommend that any commission members to recuse themselves or not become part of the commission. They are part of the commission, we're just the advisory body. So Even if there's can, a conflict of interest? We, we can, that's why there is a, there is a swearing part Part, and then we can just explain them all the give them all the information and they're the one who can decide if they want to recuse, recuse themselves or not. 
but there's someone that is directly you know associated with the commission even the recommending body who um you know from their perception of this issue okay, um, yeah, Mr. Mr. Salazar, i, I yes, understand sir. you have some statements to make and you can make that during your your presentation if you'd like but this i'm not making any statements i'm just there. asking why uh, you weren't recused at the beginning of the meeting mr martinez I that's that's my only question is that coming into the meeting i, I thought it was uh it was communicated to us that you would either recuse yourself or we would be given the opportunity at the beginning of the meeting uh to ask you to recuse yourself um and i patiently waited there as you went uh down paragraph on number five you know public comments and business from visitors when you can look back at the recording you specifically stated um that we only would talk if it was regarding items not on the agenda so i i refrained that's from speaking at that okay, moment that's, that is because correct. this item is on the agenda so if you could take a seat mr salazar uh, this moment is reserved for questions to staff, and I believe Mr. Hussein answered your question to the best of his ability. Do you have anything further to add to that, Mr. Hussein? Um, I guess not. I have a correction. Is that okay, so are there any other questions from neighboring property owners that received notice? that would like to ask any questions regarding Mr. Hussein's testimony. Mr. Chair, there is one here who I think has a question. Is it a clarification of his testimony or a question? Yes. She's coming questions the... regarding you... Director Hussein's testimony. Yes, I, I disagree with one of his comments there. Um, um, I started to live yeah. in could you identify yourself? Oh, sorry. Record? My sorry. name is Marcus Crary. I live at 1032 Los Arcos Circle. I've been a resident there. I purchased my property in 2005. In 2005, that gate, there was a gate installed there. It was before the Homeowners Association was established. And the city um, building inspector was very involved with it. It was all approved by the city. The problem was that the gate was not a commercial gate. Okay. So he said that. Ms. Prairie, Ms. Prairie, okay. Ms. these are these are questions for staff. Okay, it was just a correction of what he said. He was saying that the, we put the gate in. The gate was put in by the builders before there was an association. There'll be an opportunity okay. for all of you to present. Okay. Mr. Okay. Chair, there's one more right. gentleman here. So again. Uh, it, Commissioner Ray, it's, okay. it's only if you have a question. I am opposed. Okay. No, not, not just yet. This is purely cross examination of the director's testimony. You'll have a moment to testify yourself. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Chair, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm just trying to be clear here. Thank you, Commissioner Wright. I appreciate that. So again, let, let me clarify the procedures here. So staff makes their presentation, which Mr. Hussein did, uh, and then it's cross-examination time. Um, just as the commission asked questions to Director Hussein, the applicant and neighboring property owners who received notice of this meeting can cross-examine the director uh, regarding his testimony here tonight. So are there any further questions from neighboring property owners to Director Hussein? The applicant and neighboring property owners will then be allowed to make their presentation after this portion of the meeting. See none, hearing none, we will Actually, you have one last question. part of the meeting. Sorry. Is there any way, Mr. Hussein, that we could take all this until the April meeting? Excellent. That question's out of order for now. Okay. Until we this hearing is open, we need to actually conclude the public hearing. Okay. Well, I, I'm just. And if you want to say that during your testimony, I think you're fine. Okay. That was a question for Mr. Hussein. I understand that. But that's not the part of the meeting we're in. We have an open public hearing, and there's quasi judicial procedures here. So I ask your patience and allow the chair to do this. 
Sorry, Mr. Chair. That, that is correct, Commissioner Wright. Thank you for. Thank you, Commissioner Wright. That's that's exactly it. We've opened the public hearing, and now we're at the point to where we got to um, continue with the public hearing and conclude the public hearing. So, again, this is the portion of the meeting where the applicant can present his case. So, Mr. Salazar, are you the representative presenting on behalf of the association here tonight? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead and present, please. So again, I'm, I'm Michael Salazar. Um, I'm a resident of the Los Alamos Community Association, uh, currently the president of the association. Um, Jim, just a little bit of background history. When I bought the property uh, back in 2017, um, we bought the property, it was disclosed to us that it was a gated community and there was gate infrastructure at the community whenever we bought our properties. Uh, the realtor at the time had communicated to, the, communicated to us through the previous owners that the gates had been inoperable for about a year to a year and a half prior to us moving in, and that since they had lived in the property, the gates had worked intermittently, but to their knowledge, the gates were there from the beginning of uh, the development in 2001. Um, Mr. Martinez, who, who is the commissioner and director of the board, uh, was at the time the uh, vice president of the community association as well as another individual who's in the meeting tonight was the president. And upon living there for about a year, no meetings had been called, no dues had ever been uh, collected, and the gates were still inoperable. Uh, the community started having some issues as far as break-ins, packages being stolen, stolen from our doorstep, having individuals just driving around the community um, became an issue. Uh, Mr. Martinez at the time was beginning his uh, exit to sell the two properties that he owned inside of the community and called a meeting uh, to actually try to attempt to dissolve the association um, and pretty much to get his books clean so that he could sell his properties. Um, a couple months after that, a couple of uh, members of the community came together and decided, and me myself, because I travel a lot with the military and have young kids, that my only goal is to get the gates fixed. So we had a meeting, had a quorum, and that's whenever I got voted in on just a single basis that we were gonna fix these gates. Uh, we did so. Uh, everybody voted for the gates except for two individuals. Uh, Mr. Martinez was a no vote and from the very, very beginning sent an uh, email to myself that he had no interest in the infrastructure uh, for the upgrade and that he wished to just be able to sell his properties and move on with his life. Um, he, he, he did so, but we communicated to Mr. Martinez that whenever we voted to get the gates fixed, that he was the current property owner and would have to be held responsible for that portion of the upgrades to the gates. Uh, doing upgrades to the gates was nothing new. Mr. Martinez, when he was president of the association, uh, collected many times to fix the existing infrastructure that was there, uh, which failed because it was residential infrastructure and not built for commercial. Um, I, we get it at the time when he owned two properties, he was having to pay double than everyone else. So we understand his, his opposition and planning to sell his homes so why did not pay. Long story short, um, in the second home that he was selling, we. Uh, voted, passed it, it's in the application, the vote that we took, that we collected the dues from everyone except Mr. Martinez, and unfortunately, we have to put a lien on the home uh, prior to him being able to sell his house. Uh, that lawsuit went to court, it's filed here in the city of Espanola, we went before Mr. Judge Madrid, um, I think it's public as far as what the outcome was for that, uh, the association was in full compliance and within its authority to go ahead and carry out that lien. Um, as we are a governing body that can vote on infrastructure upgrades for the uh, community. Now, where this becomes an issue is that the day, literally the night that I was going to turn on our gates, I sent an email to the community letting them know that we were super excited. We had just all incurred a $10,000 cost. We were excited about the safety for the community. Um, and we get an email out of the blue from Mr. Hubler, who was the prior director, Mr. Uh, Muhammad, stating that we were out of compliance, that it was a public road, and that if we close those gates that, you know, basically he was going to call the police on us. Um, we, we don't know for sure, but it, it, the timing shows that, you know, Mr. Martinez was the one who reached out to Mr. Hubler. And the majority of the community thought that this was a private road since the time that they bought their homes in this community. Of course, according to the plot survey, you read it, there is a little technical portion in there that it says that it has been dedicated to the public for ingress and egress. So at that point, we decided to have a sit down meeting with Mr. Hubler and discuss with him 
you know, okay, what is the issue? What happened here? Because these gates have been here prior to the first one that even went up. These gates didn't magically appear. We were not the original people to put in the gates in 2019 as stated. And I think that's just, you know, um, uh, accidental on, on Mr. Muhammad's part, but the gates were there prior to any home being built in 2002. Uh, Mr. Humbler did verify that in his, uh, in his, in his investigation. Um, so Mr. Hubler and I, obviously, we found ourselves in, in a difficult situation because he went back through all the city records trying to find any type of meeting minutes on the approval of this community and these gates. Because we both agreed that they didn't just erect out of anywhere. They had been there. Everybody has always assumed that it's a gated community. Unfortunately, there was no meeting minutes that documented that outcome uh, in 2001 when this was done. Um, we reached out to the, to the land developer himself, as well as a surveyor who's actually planning and zoning at the county. The planning zoning director of the county laughed because he said, no, that's a private road. And I said, well, it's technically not. This is what it says right here. And he said, oh, shoot, that, that was a mistake. Uh, no biggie, we can just change the verbiage and, and dedicate it. it. It was always an assumption that it was a public road. So I went back to Mr. Hubler and explained this to him. He says, well, I understand that maybe it was a mistake, but we can't just change it. There's a due process that it's got to go through. So in our negotiations with Mr. Hubler, we reached out to the uh, chief of, of the fire department who will actually have a letter signed off by him. I don't know if he's still the current chief, but the chief at the time went and had a meeting with him, had a meeting with the uh, chief of police. Mr. Hubler also had me have meetings with all of the city entities that would possibly need access in and out. So I went and talked to the, to the Espanol public schools in the event that they ever had a disabled in our community to be able to get in. Long story short, there's a there's a program called the Knox program. To answer your question, Mrs. Quintana, um, there's a, there's a there's a program called the Knox program that's used by major municipalities across the United States. It's a program that municipalities sign sign up for, which our city has signed up for. So the fire department is is a is a, a member of that body, and essentially they get a special code. Okay, I had to go fill out an application that got signed off by the fire department. I got sent off to the Knox company and they sent us a core that we then installed at our gate. So then all emergency response entities to include the hospitals, the, the police department and the fire department um, essentially can come to our community and they have a key that I, can, I don't give them that key. This key is handled by a third party company that provides it to, to protect people because a major municipality, Santa Fe is, is a member of this program. You know, these keys are very uh, tightly controlled. So the fire department can come to our community put this key in, turn it, and it opens up the gates. Uh, police department is also supposed to have a copy of that key. Whether or not every individual, every fire truck has it, I don't know those logistics, but that is the responsibility of the fire department and the police department. Uh, we also provided them a code as a backup to that Knox box key. And in the event there's really a big emergency, they just bust through the gate, we have insurance. We discussed that as well, right? Life over property at any time. So we did take a lot of time, you know, we just didn't fix these gates and, and, and turn them on. Uh, we met with all of the proper staff. As I don't know if part of our application, if we provided copies for all of the entities that signed off, um, but we even met with RTD. Uh, we met with the uh, Presbyterian Ambulance Department. We met with uh, Chief of, of the, fire, the Fire Department, Chief of Police. And I think that wraps up about everybody that we met with. Um, so with that, uh, we met with all these bodies. Mr. Hubler did give us the temporary approval because at first he was asking us to just keep the gates open while we resolve this issue. So Mr. Hubler, this is a very touchy subject with our neighbors. We just got out of a lawsuit with Mr. Martinez. You know, we all did this for the safety of our families. You know, please allow us that this does not escalate to becoming a bigger issue. So we agreed to put the code. If you guys go to our community right now, there's a, there's a placard right there that literally has the code 000 pound for you to be able to come in and out of the community. That was our way to validate that we are not denying any access to the community because of the technicality in the plaque. Um, the, the city of Espanola has never done any maintenance to this road, not to our knowledge since I've been there in 2017, and not to any of the other residents that date back to almost the beginning of the, of the, uh, of the community. Um, we, in, our, in our packet, Mr. Helder did ask what was our plan uh, to, to maintain the road. So we, we consulted a company out of Albuquerque to give us a quote of what it would cost to fog seal the road or to possibly repave it if it needed. And that's what's inside the packet. We did not expense that. We have not collected any dues. That was just what our plan would be if we took over the road to maintain the road. All set of utilities and easements, uh, those of course would stay with the plat. We have no, 
we're not trying to take any of those back under our ownership. All we want to be able to do is keep our gate closed as a gated community as it was originally thought that it was from the very beginning. Um, what's caused this big, you know, misunderstanding, I guess, is one, it was a mistake at the very beginning, uh, bad record keeping as far as how it got uh, approved at the city, as well as there was a personal conflict within the community because of, you know, financial reasons that it went to court that has obviously escalated the situation. So um, that's kind of the whole story in a nutshell. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Thank you, Mr. Salvador. Uh, we will now go ahead and ask the commissioner, commission if you have any questions for the applicant. Commissioner Quintana. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Salazar. In reading uh, this email from you, you indicated that the uh, voting, uh, the majority of the community had voted in favor of privatizing the road through your homeowners associations and the rules for uh, your meetings. Yes. What is the percentage of residents that have to, what percentage do you have to be in order for a vote to pass? A majority vote, but we must have a quorum. Okay, so are you telling me 100% of the residents voted for this? No, ma'am. If I remember correctly, I wanna say, everybody that voted, voted yes. Let me rephrase my question. Uh, when you said the majority, what is the what? How is that identified by a percentage? Is 50, it seventy percent? No, it's usually majority. So anything, uh, so fifty-one percent would be a majority of anyone that attends and votes. Anyone that attends because I yes. saw in your packet that all residents were asked to vote. So I'm yes. gathering that not all residents. Were we voting. we. Out of all the voting that we've done, we've never had a 100% turnout. There's usually one or two homes that don't turn in their votes. There's a, there's a, there was a couple homes in there that they're second homes. It's not their primary residence. We do email and we provide them usually a printout ballot for them to provide their votes. Um, so usually we've had one or two that do not vote. I, I, I Because I took a, a sworn oath, I don't remember off the top of my head what exactly those percentages were. But for it to pass, it had to have been more than half of the people that voted. Okay. And you said that you had gone to look at uh, what the developer had done probably through permits and things like that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, somewhere along that way, there had to have been some kind of knowledge that this was going to be a city street. Did, I, did, was any of that? Did you discover any of that? So Mr. Hubbard, during his investigation, literally could not find any documentation on how this street was approved and what the agreement was between the city and the developer. Okay. Um, so that was the information that we got from Mr. Hubbard. Okay. As far as from, from our side goes, we do not have any documentation because the developer came in, he bought the five acre plot of land. He, he actually developed the road. I was told he put in the gates and then he, he started, at first he, I think he was planning to build all the homes himself. And then after he built so many homes, he actually started selling the lots individually and allowing other contractors to build the lots. So the gates were there prior to the homes ever being built and the gates were always closed. Now, where Mr. Martinez was saying that we were not following the rules because he lived in this community and was a gated community himself. He was a president of the community himself and actually fixed the gates and was the maintainer of the gates for many years was the configuration of the gate had changed. Prior to when we made our change in 2019, it had a sensor on the outside of the, of the subdivision. So when you would drive up, it just hit a loop sensor and the gate would automatically start opening for you. It was built like a residential system and it also had residential openings, um, meaning there was no code, there was no clickers. But it was told by some of the community members that at the very, very beginning of the subdivision, some of them were actually provided clickers. So it was some time between the original development um, that it went from just uh, having clickers that they put in a loop sensor. What changed whenever we made our upgrade in 2019 was obviously the openers, as well as at that point we had put a keypad in clicker, so we could technically deny only people that had a clicker and uh, keypad to entry, enter the community. In your homeowners association, um, is there any discussion in there? Uh, it's very clear by the survey that you have specific property rights. Yes. And 
on this commission, I am not the expert in that. We have the expert in that commission on the Hill. But in your homeowners associations or anywhere, how is the, the road addressed in terms of ownership? We, as far as we know, we don't own any, I, we, even though the, the, the association owns, well, we thought we owned the road, right? So that was something we thought we had to maintain. Um, but as far as individual lot owners, we only maintain right up to the road. So we maintain- so It's your impression that if you look at this property run for this particular lot, those are the boundaries of that particular That's lot. That's the boundaries of that particular okay. lot. And then the road, and then there's also a drainage portion um, at the top of the lot that, the, so the, the association and our bylaws calls out the fence that, that borders McCurdy, the gates and that drainage portion, as well as, you know, the road, if we were to take the road. So the road would not, it wouldn't like be like individual lots would have a section of road that they were responsible for maintaining. The road as a whole would be maintained as one, as an asset to the association. Okay. And um, your presentation actually answered another one of my questions, but have you been counseled on all of the liabilities that you may uh, uh, inherit, for lack of a better word, by uh, having this road private? The only consultation that I have actually had is uh, my wife and I own a property in Tasuke, which is also part of a gated community. And I reached out to that homeowners association because that one's totally private. And they maintain that all on their own. And so I've asked to see their books and I've sat down with their commission to kind of ask them, you know, how do you guys go about it? Um, as far as the legal liability, um, I'd be lying if I said that I have consulted on that. Um, I'm sure that at that point, but right now we have insurance as the community. So if someone got hurt or our road caused damage to a vehicle that we'd be responsible for, um, we would definitely add that to our insurance policy to make sure that we're covered as an association. All right, I think those are my only questions for you. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Commissioner Quintana. Are there any other questions from the commission? Mr. Chair. Commissioner Diel. Thank you. Thank you for the floor. Thank you, uh, fellow commissioners uh, and Mr. Salazar. Uh, I have a couple questions, maybe 10, but let's start with the first one. How did the survey of record, in other words, how did the surveyor of record determine it was a private road or a, uh, or a public road? Uh, how did he determine it was a mistake to call it a, a, a public road? Because when I went, I, I went in person, uh, Mr. Hill, uh, Commissioner Hill, um, to go and ask him. Because uh, originally, when I was talking to Mr. Hubler, the community wanted to understand the cost that we would have to incur to go through this process, and so um, I was informed that he was uh, he stamped us on the survey. I went to his office and I, I basically explained to him what we were trying to do, and he he basically said, "No, that's a private road. It's not a public road." So he was just under the impression that it was private as well. But then whenever we printed out the plan and we looked mm -hmm. at the description, at that moment, it was like, oh, okay, I can see why now. And that's how that came about. Okay. <clears throat> he didn't show you any of the documentation that may have said that Mr. Droival will, and, and yeah, that the Droivals uh, intended that road to be a private road. Did he give you any affidavits that they had signed that it was a private road? Uh, anything like that? He did not, Mr. Hill. I also did not ask him for that documentation. I had specifically just went to go and ask him, you know, okay. if this change, what would it cost and could you do it for us? So that's hearsay then. Uh, yes, sir. Because they did sign it. They signed it in front of a notary public. They should, they should have read what they were signing. So, okay. Second question is, um, do you have... Uh, Covenants, uh, restricted covenants for Los Al this this subdivision. We do have covenants, Mr. Hill. Do, do they say anything? I don't have I have them in front of me, nor have I recovered them from uh, public records. But do they say anything about this road? I I'd have to check. I don't want to say okay, yes. Thank you so much. If you don't mind. Okay. Uh, so you had mentioned that it was intended to be a gated community. You had also mentioned that you had talked to a gated community in Tesuki, and that's in Santa Fe County. 
Uh, I wouldn't doubt if this is in Santa Fe County too, but uh, the Santa Fe, the, the gated community in Tesuki, uh, I guess that would fall under the Santa Fe County jurisdiction. This one falls under the city of Española jurisdiction. Uh, unless I'm wrong, the gated community in Tesuki falls under the jurisdiction of the, the uh, community of Tesuki. I'm not sure. But uh, I, I would think that there would be some some differences as far as well, what uh, and how this road would be handled as far as it being public and or private. Uh, but that's just a statement uh, on my part, not really a question for you, Mr. Salazar. Uh, so, and I made a note here that the only documentation available that determines the custodial jurisdiction of this road is the plat then. Yes. From our documentation, okay. as well as from what residents recall from when they moved in, but as far as legal, you know, concrete evidence, the only thing we have is what's on the plat. Okay. We have emails from this. We also have an email that came from previous uh, members that were a part of the city council in like 2012 ish that had asked the city whether or not they could research whether or not it was public or private. Um, and to my recollection, I believe we were told it was private, but it was in an email. It, was, it wasn't with any type of concrete documentation to back up that statement, but we do have an email from 2012, from 2013, 2013 from people within the city stating they also assumed that it was a practice. Because when it snows, we've never had a snow plow go inside of our community, but like plow the snow um, or, or, or any type of maintenance of the road at all since the, the beginning of the community. But no, to, to answer your question. Okay, who, who paved that? Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Ball paved that, that community. He did the, the full development. Okay, Probably so better. the city doesn't go in and maintain anything. They don't plow the road when it snows. They don't. They don't uh, uh, sand it. Nothing. They, if anything does happen to that road, everybody in that community is is obligated. And, and agrees to to maintain that road as it is right now without uh, without any decision made this evening. That is correct. Okay, all right. Uh, to give you a full disclosure, though, I don't believe that there's been any maintenance done to the road since it was originally paved. Okay, and, and to harp on on Commissioner, I'm sorry, to harp on Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Quintana's. The first house concern. I think oh. I'm listening to my echo. But uh, to harp on Commissioner Quintana's uh, concern, one one uh, one thing that does stand out for me is um, the majority of the of the folks that own lots in this subdivision have voted for this road to become a a private road. Am I correct on that? Is that what you meant? What you had said that is correct. Hmm. Okay. All right. I believe that's all I have for you, Mr. Salazar. Mr. Mr. Chair, thank you for the floor. Uh, thank you, my fellow commissioners, for your patience. Thank you, Commissioner Rio. Chair, I have any other questions from the commission? Commissioner Casados has questions, Mr. Chair. Mr. Salazar, go ahead. The only question that I have is you're talking about the land over I'm assuming my mayor was ball and no, Mr. Ball was the, the gentleman that bought the whole five acre lot and developed the property, subdivided it and developed the property. Right. Under this, dedication and affidavit, the question that I have right here, it, he gives everything to the city of Mexico. That, that, that's where, the, where, the, where this issue has, has arisen is that what. But this was done in 2000. 20 years ago. That's a question that I have. It's like, you know, 20 years later, why are the government is proposing that this road be private now? Because we were asked to keep our gates. So these, these gates, so we all bought our homes in this community with gates, assuming that we were a gated community. And the gates were, were, were closed intermittently because they had technical issues with the gates. When we upgraded the system in 2019, um, the gates were basically to remain closed and the city came in and said, you guys cannot close those gates. But it says here it should be dedicated to public forever for the purpose of egress and egress. 
and for the construction and maintenance of utilities. And the last part of that said that the planning jurisdiction is the city of the state. Exactly. So, so that's the issue, uh, Mr. Casales, is that what he dedicated the road to the city, but then he put private gates from the very beginning. So was it a private road? Was it a public road? But it's always been treated as a private road. I bought the first house that they built, and the gates were actually locked. So, you know, I had, it was like, uh, I mean, to get in there, you had to, you had to get the manual or ball to open point, the gate. Point of order. Point, point of order, um, I, I hear someone else speaking, so you'll get your opportunity to speak. Um, these are, this, this time is reserved for questions from the commission to the applicant, so thank you. I, I guess uh, to, to uh, just, just say what Mr. Salasad said, Victor Salasad said, Mr. Martinez was that uh, he bought the first home in the community just so that it's on record and will be reported uh, that uh, Originally, uh, those gates were locked, and the only way to get, actually enter the premises was uh, to get a key from Mr. Royval. Okay, thank you. Did, did you have any other follow up or any other questions, uh, Commissioner Casados? He's saying no, Mr. Chair. Commissioner okay, Quintana does have her hand raised. All right, Commissioner Quintana. Mr. Salazar, Mr. I have a follow-up question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do have follow-up questions. When you or any other property owner purchased the property, uh, I'm trusting you have been provided a copy of this survey plat of the subdivision. I believe so, yes, as, okay. as part of the okay. whenever you so that language was there, so it was fully disclosed. I've heard repeatedly this evening that this has been a private road or treated as a private road. And my own take on this is it should be defined as it's always been a gated area, gated access. But that doesn't change the definition of the road, which this clearly has been reported as being a public road. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I just wanted to Yeah, that yeah you would be correct if, if, if that in the plot, it has stated that from the very beginning. Right. And Mr. Casados, or Commissioner Casados, questioned why 20 years later, and you said this all came up because we upgraded the, the gate. Did anyone direct you to upgrade the gate other than your own? So the gates themselves have been the same since 2001, the actual physical gates. The only okay. thing we changed is the arm that opens and closes the gate. Okay. That's what was changed. The brain behind it. So yeah, we went from a residential system to a commercial system. So the gates themselves have been the same in front of the community. Like I said, all, another reason why this is a big issue is because we bought these homes being told that they were it was a gated community. So if this all of a sudden becomes a public road and we open our gates, we just devaluized devalue all of our properties within the state community. Well, I, I, I guess what I would say to that is that you purchased in this subdivision as a gated community with the uh, perception that you were going to have a, uh, a more secure area. Yes, you weren't going to have traffic that was uninvited or the residents up. But it's clear by this survey that knowledge was disclosed, whether you knew it, whether you read it or not, I can't control. But you knew that this was considered a public road. I don't think anybody knew, man, to be honest with you, um, that it was public un until, until when it became that we all became aware that it was public was whenever Mr. Martinez contacted Mr. Hubler and we were told, leave your gates open. That was the first time the city had ever mandated that those gates be required to stay open. And at that point, we asked under what consensus do we have to leave our gates open? We're a gated community. And then we were pointed to that. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Quintana. Any other questions from the commission? Commissioner Wright. Sure. So, uh, it's Mr. Martinez, correct? Oh, Mr. Salazar. Mr. Salazar. Yeah. Sorry, no, sorry, no, sorry, no. sorry, 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 sorry. I didn't get rid of I got it wrong. I apologize. Sincere <laughs> apologies. Um, so, again, your application is to transfer ownership 
to the homeowners association, correct? Yes, sir. Um, but you do understand that the legal record on this, according to this subdivision plat for the Los Al, it appears to be entitled. The Actually, Harbor Lake. I take that back. You said that the, the 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 purpose of the application was to do that. When we were talking to Mr. Hubler, we have asked if it would be possible to just leave the road to the city, but allow us to keep our gates closed. Right, but that's what I'm trying to clarify. Yeah. We've talked a lot about the gate. But your application is actually to take ownership of that right away. Because Mr. Elder said from his previous uh, knowledge of being, you know, working planning his zoning and signing, he says, I've never heard of a gated public road. He said, so the only way that you can keep your gates closed is if you, it was Mr. Elder's recommendation that we do the application exactly how we do it, because that was the only way that he saw we could actually technically keep our gates closed. Yeah. Okay. Um, I understand that, but your application is not for that. Your application is to take ownership of the public right away. Yes, sir. So that we can keep the gates closed. Um, okay. That's, That's the only one. There's a clear problem yeah. with that because it is city owned property and it was dedicated, um, as a subdivision. This is the requirements for subdivisions within the city of Espanola and pretty much throughout any community is that the subdivision has to uh, get the curb and gutter and all the infrastructure in place and then dedicate it to the municipality. That's typical precedent for subdivisions within the city of Westbury Hill. And that's exactly what happened with this Lothar Bonnet subdivision, which again was signed by Mayor Richard Lucero in November Second of 2001, um, and approved by the city and taken ownership based on this dedication and affidavit. Um, that clearly shows these roads were dedicated to the city of Espanol. And this, this would again was duly recorded in Rio Rita County because the property does lie in Rio Rita County. Um, on the 4th of December 2001. And it's recorded in book uh, 196, page 7529, uh, which is also instrument number 217852. But that is the legal record for this property. And the, do you understand that? Yes, sir. Yeah, but that's why we decided to sit down with Mr. Hubler and try to do our due diligence to untangle something. We all inherited this issue, including this body, Mr. Helder, residents of the community, that however this got approved, because obviously gates should have never been erected in the first place if that's the way that it was dedicated to the city. And so, yes, I, I'm agreeing with you. Right, so, yeah. but this is super, and again, this is just a recommendation. This, this commission has absolutely no ability to render a decision on whether or not city property is acquired, disposed of, or anything else. Okay. It's a recommending body. Um, but that's one of the problems also in New Mexico in, in the New Mexico Constitution. It prohibits governments from donating anything um, to any private individual or even, even nonprofits. Um, that's the actual component of the New Mexico Constitution, I believe. It's not even state law, it's it's actually the constitution of this state. Um, so that's the problem this commission is going to have is that essentially what we're doing is unconstitutional. What you're asking us to do is not allowed under the constitution of the state of New Mexico. Um, just to be crystal clear on that. The issue of the gate, I think what you've done with the Knox locks um, and that access, it seems like to me, that should satisfy the city's uh, need for access to that property. But again, that's, that's, not the question that's before this planning commission tonight. What's before us is whether or not to transfer ownership of the public street and right of way and all of the city's infrastructure, the water and sewer lines that are in that street and right of way that's to the homeowners association. I don't believe so, sir. We don't want but that, city that's what the application is. That's what's before this commission tonight and what we have to make a recommendation on to the governing body. Um, that 
And so again, I just want to be clear with that, that you understood that. That's what the decision this body has to render tonight is a recommendation to, to city council. Can I that's ask all this, I had, Mr. Chair. Can I ask specifically in the application where it states that we want the city's infrastructure? It's ownership of the property is ownership of what's under the ground. You're not, there's no clarity here in that. And, and again, so it doesn't, doesn't matter. Have utilities cut the it doesn't really matter property. either way, even if you were to separate the surface, which I don't believe you can, from what's under there, there is still city infrastructure there. Um, and the road itself is city infrastructure, and that's where it's required in the subdivision. Um, ordinance of this municipality and many others. Um, actually, even in, even within the counties, that's required in a lot of cases. So when you have city utilities coming through private properties through the city, you're saying that those utilities belong. I'm, I'm sorry, sir, but those utilities are in the right of way that was dedicated by this plat, the no. subdivision plat that that you all, chances are every deed you have references this plat and the lot numbers displayed on this plat. I understand, I guess what all I'm trying to clarify is that we have no interest in wanting to take the city's utilities, ownership of city utilities. So that's fine, but it's it's all or none. In this it's called case. an easement. That's not what you have, and I'm sorry you're out of order. We'll get a chance to do that. But uh, Mr. Chair, that's my questions. I have no further- Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, for this, for this applicant, there's still other people to speak here. Thank you, Commissioner Wright. Are there any other questions from the commission? I got a couple and, and they just kind of dovetail, I think, from Commissioner Quintana's questions uh, to get some clarity. Um, you did say that the gates were non-operational for a period of a year and a half to two years or something like that, Mr. Salvador? About, yeah. From what that correct? Okay. Now, again, uh, as Commissioner Quintana pointed out, uh, when properties are sold, um, the properties do reference this plat um, that clearly states that the roads are dedicated to the public. Um, now, as a matter of just making sure, uh, why didn't you seek uh, city opinion or city approval prior to investing $10,000 worth of upgrades to the gate system? We did, Mr. Martinez. Um, my uh, last vice president, uh, Daniel Ortiz, <coughs> an engineer for Windstream, um, he's actually the guy that does all the engineering here in town. So he's very familiar with utility easements. So I asked him to take this on. He contacted the city whether or not we needed a full permit uh, to make these upgrades to the gates. And the exact words that he was given was that it was existing that infrastructure. Therefore, we did not need the full permit. Um, so that, that was as far as we wanted the city. Gates were already, were already there. And, I, and if I want to ask Mr. Martinez yourself, uh, you have my position for many years, and I have uh, documentation of you collecting funds from the community and actually expediting the exact same the exact same thing that I did. Did you consult with the city every time you replaced an arm on the gates? Because that's exactly what I did myself. I just put a commercial gate opener on rather than a residential arm. So you did the exact same thing I did, just it was different infrastructure. My question is, did you pull a permit and consult the city every time you did it as well? So to, to that end, so these are questions for you, Mr. Salazar. So to that end, um, the, can you explain the differences between the gate system that was there before and how it allowed people in and out versus the changes to the gate system that you made? The gate system has changed many functionalities through its life from the beginning of 2001. Originally, when the gates were put in, as Mr. Salazar, Victor Salazar said earlier, it was a key that you had to get from Mr. Roy Ball. Then Ms. Dara Curry, who was, who was also in, in, in attendance at the very beginning when there was very few homes in the community, there were clickers, but that was very short-lived. 
as the community started to scale out, the system that was put in place was a loop detector, which then no any car that drove up and got close enough to the gate, the gate would open on its own. And that was the function that it stayed in from whatever time in the early 2000s up until 2019, when we then put in a clicker system and a keypad. Okay, so, so which is what you have say that the, the Sorry, changes what? in the system. So is it correct to say that the changes in the system, and I think uh, Director Hussein touched on this, is that the gate system prior was a passive system with the loop detectors where any vehicle could access it, you know, a garbage truck, a fire engine, a, a visitor, whatever. Uh, but with the changes that you made, it's now a restricted gate system where you actually have a have to have a passcode to enter. Is that correct? It is not a restricted system right now. Um, it has not been ever because Mr. Hubbard did not allow us to close the gates. Since we made the change and the city communicated with us, uh, as I said, all parties have been notified, signed off, and provided a code to enter the community as needed. Um, so it's it's still a passive system, but if that's it right now. Uh, the code is listed right there under the keypad. Anybody can type it in and get it. So it's still passive. It's never been. It, now, our goal through this process is to take back the road and make it where we restrict access. Um, but to date, it's never been a, a restricting system. But that was the original intent. Is that correct? That's the reason for a gated community, Mr. Martinez. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question, I, I know you mentioned that um, you didn't have the, the numbers tallied, but it looks like there's 20, according to the plat, there's 20 lots within the subdivision. Can you give us an estimate of how many were in favor of, uh, of the road being privatized to the association and to the residents? Why, Mr. Martinez, you took this vote years ago? Um, I'm looking for my phone. I have in my backpack. I'd have to refrain from giving you a number, Mr. Martinez, because I'd be pulling it out of it, out of thin air. If I could give you an estimate, it was probably upwards of 80%, because on most of the things that we voted, that's been the consensus. Um, there's usually always one no, one property, maybe two that say no, and we've always had one or two properties that refrain from voting for the various reasons. So if I had to give you an estimate, it'd probably be about 75%. Okay, thank you, Mr. Selzer. Uh, next, uh, if there's no further questions from the commission, uh, Director Hussein, do you have any questions for the applicant? I don't have a question, but I just want to clarify something that I did mention two things when I said that they did they install the gate, it means that it's a provider. And I did want to clarify that I did say that it was already there since the subdivision was established. Yes, sir. And again, the, the, my statement about the, the restriction of the gate, that the original plan that you had to, to install the commercial scale gate or commercial scale operation, operational arm was to restrict access. So that, that, that's what I was mentioning, that that's, that's why this was changed with the commercial scale. Yes, that's a mistake. Uh, anything else, Director? That's it. That's true. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, is there any neighboring property owners uh, that received notice who have any questions for Mr. Salazar? Again, any neighboring property owners who received notice that have questions for Mr. Salazar? There's no one in the audience signifying that as a chair. Thank you, Commissioner. All right. I appreciate right your help with appreciate your help with that, by the way, uh, Commissioner. All right, we'll move on to uh, thank you, Mr. Salazar. You can have a seat now. So we'll move on to um, any presentations, either proponents or opponents to the request from neighboring property owners. I know there's several. Uh, in the audience. Uh, so we'd like to um, make sure that any of your 
testimony, your presentation is not redundant to the testimony that you already heard. If you have any new things to share or would like to present to the commission, um, you may approach the podium. Identify yourself with your name, please, and, and, uh, and proceed. My name is Nathan Ortiz. I live at 101 Los Angeles, uh, Commissioner Wright, uh, B. Hill, Quintana, uh, Mrs. Martinez, and uh, Mr. Casales. Um, I have more of just a comment. Um, this started when I moved in there in 2013 and 2012. Um, the first time I bought my house, Ford told me that it was a gated community private road. Took their word for it. The gates were inoperable at the time. I uh, knew Mr. Martinez, uh, Eric Martinez, talked to him and welcomed me to the community. He also told me that the gates were going to be fixed. That if he had lots of problems with them, they'd be fixed and they'd be closed. Main reason I bought there. Another thing is, as the homelessness problem in this city and the, the drug problem and the crime problem in the city, and you know the governing body as well as you guys wanting to bring you know businesses and people into the city you know we're a community trying to uh sort of give a facelift on our community you go in there everybody has good jobs everybody's well respected everybody has nice cars we all take care of our homes we just want to protect what's ours as for utility lines there's such a thing called an easement we don't there's there's public utility lines and lots of private property with easement as, as Michael stated earlier, our first thing was just to close the gates and leave it as is, but we were recommended by the last director to go this route. So we're doing what we were recommended by you, by your directors, not necessarily you, but by your directors, your past director, maybe not this director. You know, back when my wife was a council lady, she sat down, she, I was the president at the time, so I asked her, do the research. She researched it. We went to this, you know, she went straight to the streets director. Streets director came. I have the email saying it's private street, Mr. Ortiz. Just do what you want with it. Great. We all moved forward thinking it was a private street. We don't always go and pull out our plats and see. When you buy a home, they give you the, they give you a big plat of your property and they give you an eight by ten of the whole subdivision. Are you going to read that stuff in an eight by ten? We're excited to buy our homes. We're excited to get in there. You missed a few things. You know, I'm here tonight to ask you guys to please, whether you guys keep the road, let us close our gates, protect ourselves, protect our community. We've done the proper things with the emergency companies, police departments, UPS, the utility departments, all the departments that need entrance into there. We're willing to give access. What we're trying to do is keep unwanted people from going in there. This is a dead end street. It's not a cross through street, like let's say Valley Drive. Valley Drive wanted to put gates many years ago, but it's a cross through street. I understand that. Ours is a very small community. It's a loop. It's essentially a dead end. It's just a circle, a small circle. I've been there since 2013. I have not seen a, a city street sweeper there ever. I have never seen a snow plow truck there ever. I've never seen a patching crew there ever. When our entrance had concrete and got messed up, we as a community put the money together to repair it. But you know, the city has bigger fish to fry, more roads to be worried about to take care of. They don't even have the money to keep, you know, Low Isle Street, North McCurdy, terrible, potholes, everything, everything. Still working on the, on the other subdivision too, that's sinking that road. I mean, supposedly there's money there. How many years has that been going? We as a community are willing to take that over, give you guys all the easements you need for your utilities, for whatever you guys need. I think um, Michael's gone way beyond for you know all the emergency vehicles. You know, things have really, I and mean, we want to take care of it. And you know, I'm hoping you guys give you know the recommendation to pass this so that we can keep our community safe. I mean, I welcome you guys all to go take a drive through there. Look at our look at our community. It's probably one of the nicest in the city of Espanola. And that's the way we want to keep it. We have elderly, we have retired people, 
you know, we've had we've had people come and knock on people's doors in the middle of the night to call police. I had someone uh, try to break into my home with my wife and my children home alone. We want to keep these people out, and it detours people. It doesn't stop crime, but those gates detour these bad people from going into our community. So I hope with that, you guys consider letting us keep our gates closed. We're not keeping out the city, we're keeping out unwanted people. Like I said, it's not a passage to, can't get to El Gano from there. Can't get from Riverside to the place. It's a circle. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ortiz. Thank you. Um, any uh, questions for Mr. Ortiz from the commission? Commissioner Quintana. Mr. Chair, may I go? I, yes, uh, Commissioner Quintana, please. Um, what I'm drawing from these discussions, I completely understand the basis of this discussion on several levels. When all of you purchased the property, you were of the understanding, incorrectly, unfortunately, that this was a private road. And I think I've tried to clarify that whether it's private or public, your anticipation was that you would have a gated community, which on the premise or on that basis would provide you additional security. I don't think that there's any argument whatsoever that most people, especially when they have invested a fair amount of money in something, want to live safely and want their properties protected. Unfortunately, in our society, whether it's in Espanol, in Mexico, or anywhere else, we do have people that don't respect other people's properties. So I do want you to know that I understand that portion of the argument. Now, you cannot argue that because you didn't understand that it was a public or, uh, uh, public or private road, it is clearly recorded and documented. But my question to you then is because the city's attorney seems to think or is a, has stated an opinion that this is a public street and therefore an asset to the city and cannot be donated back and you can only answer if you guys have had this discussion and maybe Commissioner Wright can tell me if this is the practice that can happen. Have you as a community entered into the idea of buying the road from the city? Um, no, we haven't. We, we haven't done that. Okay. But, that but okay. for your, your, you know, like I said, when you buy your property, you get a big plot of your home in your property boundaries. For the whole community, I think they gave us an eight by 10. Okay. So that, I'll admit, that was a mistake on my part that I didn't get a magnifying glass and read the small print. Okay. But I have in trust with the current, at that time, the current president, Mr. Martinez up there, who the gates to guarantee me they're going to work. Okay. So, and then the, the person I bought the home from said it was a private road. I believe that. My mistake. I'll admit to that. You know, if there was another way to where you guys could keep your road and we could close our gates like other cities, like Albuquerque, Bernalillo, Rio Rancho, you know, why are we always three steps behind every other community in the state? They're, they do it all over the state of New Mexico. Why can't we? Like I said, if it was a through and through road, I could understand this completely. It is not. It is. Now with the new home, 20 homes, there's 20 homes there. It's a small circle. I'm sure you guys are familiar with it. We all have small children. Well, most of us have small children. If not, we have, they have grandchildren. Our kids still ride out on bikes. They play basketball on the streets. With those gates open, we would have people just come off the curry road, joy right around because they're running from police, hide in the corner and leave. It was a tip feel safe for my children. Now, since we've had these gates that are semi, answer, Commissioner? semi operational, Commissioner Quintana, that is Commissioner Quintana. Did your you you question off. get answered? Uh, no, my question didn't get answered. Uh, 
For buying? No, we haven't. We haven't, haven't discussed no. it. So I guess I, I, guess I, should, I a... guess I should close the question by asking, is that something that you guys would be willing to look into? That would have to be discussed with the community. I, I can't answer that. There's 19 other members. Okay. I, I, you know. And Commissioner Wright, I don't even know if that's an option. Uh, I believe, Commissioner Quintana, um, it should be transferred, but transfers like that, um, I might get myself in trouble with the attorneys in the room, but um, I think that requires state board of finance approval okay. um, so, for so. any governmental entity to transfer to sell a, to sell an asset that they have. It's possible, but I do believe it takes board of finance approval. Sure, and, and I, I do not imply that it's an easy road. I was just seeing if there was another solution. We'd be willing to pay for it. I I would be willing to pay for it. So one more question, and this is for the whole governing body. The whole governing body. Planning and zoning. All right. Planning, planning and zoning commission. For the planet, for, for the planning. So we've been here before and we've asked for your recommendation, and this is what it's gotten us. So, so order next question, question, question from the commission. We at least talk to the room. This okay. is questions from the commission. So, so okay. We really that's where we are. Your testimony is concluded. And now it's time for I, I think yes, it did. You actually went to sit down. She asked a question and, 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 and we're in that point of cross-examination. I okay. realize this quasi-judicial stuff is so, so I have one simple question for you guys. What is your recommendation thank, for us? Thank you, Commissioner. Are, right. there, are there any other questions from the commission? You know, that's that's it's simple. Hi, we'll, do what, we'll do what needs to be done. What do we need to do so that we don't have to? The chair, I have a question. Commissioner V. Hill has a question. Commissioner V. Hill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, fellow commissioners. My question is, uh, and, and first, I want, to, I, want to, I want to let you know that this dedication and affidavit that was signed by the Roy Balls, uh, they're, they're, not dedicating, <clears throat> they're not dedicating to the city alone. They're dedicating to the public. How do you guys plan to approach the public to vacate that, uh, that road as an easement, as a public easement? I could answer you uh, on that. That's why we come to you guys. As right, well, constituents, you, that's so why you guys are, voted, uh, are, are put on the board to help your constituents. Good. Uh, this and again, this is a argument that has to be crystal clear to everyone. This is why we're voting for this. We have no authority to make this decision. This is city property. Every one of us sits here as volunteers. Thank you. And thank you, Chair. Chair this has Mr. to go Chairman, to the right? very bottom. Mr. Chair, okay. Mr. Chair, I do believe there is a solution to that, of which we will come to that. I just wanted to see if he if he had an idea of how to go about that, and if he did have a good an idea of how to go go about that, we we could have you know probably enhanced on that and maybe come to a really really good solution that is. Uh, didn't have any any um, uh, I guess uh, blockage. Uh, to get this thing done, but I believe there is a way to do it, and I'll recommend that again uh, as we go on in the, with the meeting. Uh, but I do also want to uh, pick the director's brain concerning that same question. I didn't mean to offend anybody, and uh, and I would appreciate it if uh, you didn't try to offend in, in this commission, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Vigil. Are there any other que questions for Mr. Ortiz from the commission? Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Okay. Those appear to be Mr. Chair. I'm sorry? Does not appear to be. We can go to the next. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Property uh, owner. Director, uh, Director Hussein, do you have any questions for the neighboring property owner? I, I don't have any questions. Does the applicant have any questions for the neighboring property owner? No. Thank you. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the next uh, neighboring property owner who received notice. Uh, can you state your, your name please for us? 
Could you say your name, sir? Hello, I'm Cifrel Maestas, and uh, I was previously president of your college down the street. And uh, I'd, I'd like to explain something to you. This, this, uh, this, these papers have Amazon in it, in them, okay? And what happened was the guy was supposed to deliver a pair of headphones to our house. Excuse me, I, I'm 82 years old and, and uh, I'm, I, I, I tend to go off, off on a tangent once in a while. So anyway, um, Amazon called me on the afternoon of the 27th. And he said, he said that he wasn't able to deliver my package to me. And I thought, what the Dickens? Uh, I, I, we had heard from uh, your previous planning director that uh, that um, the accounts should not suffer appreciably and that um, packages would be delivered. Well, uh he uh, the the fellow who's uh, supposed to deliver the package on uh, on the early afternoon of uh, of the 27th he called me and he said hey uh we're sorry uh we can't deliver the package and I immediately called Amazon and uh, and uh, I got back a letter saying that I solved your problem, that they they are very interested in in making certain that uh, you receive them package and uh, so anyway uh, the, the individual told me on the afternoon of uh, early afternoon of the 27th of February that he or she would reimburse my bank account and there it is $190 and 63 cents. Now, uh, I, I need to ask you who among you uh, is prepared to receive for the city uh, this document because sure enough, uh, Amazon returned the hundred and ninety dollars and sixty three cents. Absolutely. And so that pleased me a great deal. And then there was this meeting coming up. And I thought, why is the fellow hesitant to deliver my package? Why? Why is it? I never spoke to him. All I got was a text message on the 
telephone. We could ask him. We could ask him. But I think, I think I'm getting ahead of the game. It's the question of undesirables. Who is not desirable in the community? Who is not? And so you want to you want to pass on a recommendation to the city that is uh, just terrible. Just terrible. You can pass on a recommendation to the city to keep poor people out, drunks out, uh, Mexicans out. I'm particularly concerned about the, the class of people that we are creating, okay? Sure, we, we can, we can uh, create a class of people in Espanola. You know, Espanola is full of poor people. You know, do any of you have any riches to speak of? No, no. Uh, you know, I'm a pensioner living in this community. And uh, I mentioned to you, I was president at the community college. As a matter of fact, we're publishing a, a book, a history book about the college. And it, it says that we are all one community. I'm sorry. I've got probably gone on too long. Thank you, Mr. Maestas. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Maestas. You can hold on tight. We'll uh, we might have some questions for you. Are there any questions uh, for Mr. Maestas from the commission? Sure. Seeing none, hearing none. Um, are there any questions from staff, Director Hussein? We don't have any. And does the applicant have any questions for Mr. Maestas? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Are there any other neighboring property owners who received notice that would like to speak at this time? Commissioner Wright? Yes, we have a gentleman who would like to, Mr. Chair. Robert, do we have anybody on the Zoom? Thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, so my name is Ben Lopez and uh, one of the residents, 1016 of Sao Um Thank you to the commission for setting the time aside to talk about this a little bit to hear uh, our request. Um, so I think my presentation that I focus on is, uh, we're one of the families that has many kids. Uh, my wife and I, Juanita, we've got five children that we've been raising, they're in Los Angeles, and uh, one of the noisy houses in the neighborhood, and we thank our neighbors for bearing with us. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I can say we moved in in 2004. We were one of the early families that moved in when most of those lots were dirt. Um, and I'm also one of the residents who failed to pay attention to some of the fine print that was in some of those plats because when, when we applied, uh, I, I, I 
I received a version of the plat that was just like a, a eight and a half by 11 in one of the packets you can imagine, but still, uh, it's certainly there, so I acknowledge that. But I'd probably say thank you to, to the commission. I heard some comments like Commissioner Quintana that you guys understand the safety. Everybody wants safety in their neighborhoods and you guys get it. So I acknowledge that and I, and I, and I appreciate it. I will add the data point that from the time we moved in in 2004, when we were a smaller family, uh, the developer did leave me with the impression that this was gonna be a private road. And I failed to do the homework to, to fact check him. Uh, I, I trusted him. Uh, so very disappointing. And there was a couple other disappointments on a couple of things that the developer promised us. But the idea was that this would be a community that would be very safe for families, that there would be a playground, all this stuff. Uh, but safety was one of them. I will say that it didn't really catch my attention probably between 2004 and about 2015. Uh, we didn't seem to have a lot of, you know, it's like the squeaky wheel. Um, we didn't notice that many problems. We felt very comfortable leaving our little children to go around the circle at the time. Uh, but from about 2015-ish till about now, things have changed. They're different. Uh, and I can tell you that uh, we've had a huge escalation of a lot of us with these break-ins in the vehicles, uh, with uh, uh, our cams catching uh, folks trying to break in. Sometimes when we, the husbands, are not around and our wives are home. And I can tell you that you can imagine how I react when, when the community is very conscientious about sending an email out and somebody attempted something on one of the properties. And in particular during the summertime, I can tell you that we absolutely the, the transient uh, concern. And uh, I'm certainly open to, my only problem is anyone who has criminal intent. That's my problem. Anybody else, they could come by and say hi if they like. We'll offer them lemonade. But there has been a high level of folks up to no good. And uh, it's risen in the recent years. Um, and I think our main intention, if nothing else, I'd really like to feel safer. And from the time that there was this temporary arrangement to, to where there's still public access, but you have to put the code, you have to read the numbers. Uh, the decline has been awesome. I mean, in terms of, we felt a lot safer, but I think the general statement from our family would be, uh, from the 2015 timeframe, we feel a lot less safe. And if it's the evenings, I don't let them out. That, that's how much it's happened. I won't let them out on the street when it starts getting dark. Uh, we've had enough problems that I really worry. And I, I've become increasingly worried when I go to work and my wife, she's, she's, she does the hardest job, right? It's the homemaker and raising the kids, but I worry for her safety. And my, that concern has been going up since that time frame. Definitely worried. Uh, don't want to be put into a difficult situation if someone comes around trying to cause trouble. City of Española police have been great in terms of when we reach out, they say we'll try to do courtesy, but uh, it, it's difficult for them to consistently do that sort of thing. So I just wanted to put that data point out there, and I appreciate everybody's consideration to the degree that your recommendation can include this very real concern for, for raising little kids there and, and our family members when we go off to work. And that's it. That's my presentation. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Um, is there any questions from the commission? Mr. Chair. I might have one from uh, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Commissioner Mr. Hill. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Wright, uh, fellow commissioners. Uh, the question I have is, is, is kind of off the wall. And uh, do you order uh, from Amazon or from the internet at all? Do, do they do they bring in um, uh, your your uh, your items to, uh, readily? I, do you get what you order? In other words, yeah, I I'd be embarrassed to admit how much we do it. I'll just say a lot. We get a lot of packages. Yeah. Packages. Yeah. Okay. So so really, there's not a, there's not a, an issue with it for you as far as that goes. An issue in terms of packages making it to the house. That's correct. Yes, sir. Yeah. No. No problems there. I, I think uh, the, the 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 folks that support the community, mail, whether it's the mail folks, delivery folks, uh, law enforcement, we've seen that their access is pretty easy. We have not really seen any issues. I, th I think that flow has seemed pretty good from my perspective. Okay, good. I have one more question that you may or may not be able to, to answer, and that is concerning law enforcement. 
uh, and and um, uh, well, emergency vehicle access. Do you think that they would be willing, or or, or just as willing to enter a private road in the case of uh, an emergency? Well, my impression would be that probably wouldn't be a problem. Uh, certainly, we'd have to ask them, but uh, mm -hmm. but uh, we've had. Uh, it seems like normal activity, right? Anytime the police want to come by or they do a courtesy call, they need to come in the community. From my perspective, it seems like no problem. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been an issue. Uh, we haven't mm -hmm. had any fires, thank God, mm -hmm. uh, in the community. But I would mm -hmm. imagine that yeah. I couldn't envision that being a, a, a realistic problem. I, I, I think there would be a problem, but that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Outstanding, sir. Thank you for your, for your, for your candor. And that's all I have. Um, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Viejo. Are there any other questions from the commission? Not really a question, Mr. Chair, just kind of clarification. This commission was in the same boat. We got presented this to try and read that plan, eight and a half by 11. And that's why these things showed up, because that is totally illegible, uh, just for the record. So appreciate staff getting that, that helps, but that's one of the problems we're dealing with here is that dedication. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Clarification. Any uh, questions from staff? We don't Director? have any questions. Thank you. Are there any uh, questions to Mr. Lopez from the applicant? Uh, no, sir. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Thank you. I'm uh, Victor Salazar, director. Property owners. I'm Victor Salazar. And uh, I just want to let you know that uh, like for uh, trick or treat and stuff like that, we open the gates and we allow all the cars to come around. So it's not like we just uh, shut the whole city off, you know? So we do do that, and we uh, we decorate our, our yards and everything with farolitos and everything, so people can drive around and see it. So we welcome people to come in. It's not like we we uh, lock the gates, you know. We open it up so all the kids can drive around. So that's all I that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Mr. Salazar. Any uh, questions from the commission? Mr. Chair, I might have one. Mr. Neville. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Salazar, if it does become a private road, uh, would you then reconsider closing the gates for Halloween, uh, closing the gates for, uh, for the uh, decorations during the holidays? Uh, would you then do that? And I ask this question because you would then, the, the Homeowners Association, would have that that power to vote on doing so. Uh, would you vote on doing so, or, or do you think uh, anybody else would vote on doing so? I would have to say, my wife enjoys Halloween so much that she would have to have the gates open. <laughs> she just she loves it. Okay. And, uh, I don't think okay. that we would, we would ever uh, close the people out. Mm hmm. Okay, thank you very much. The things running through my head are as if it became a, a yeah a gated community uh, to the point where where uh, I mean it would become so exclusive nobody would be get, get in be able to get in there unless you were invited uh, or had a, a clicker to, to open the, up the gate. It, it uh, it's really sort of the makings of a really interesting, a possibly a really interesting scientific uh, sci-fi sci movie or novel or something. But uh, that's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other questions? Any questions from staff? We don't have any questions. Any questions from the applicant? No, sir. Okay. Are there any other neighboring property owners who would like to speak? Um, my name is Juanita Lopez, and um, I'm the spouse of Ben. 
Um, we have lived there 18 years. Um, I'm a stay-at-home mom. I've always been able to stay at home. Um, I just wanted to say that when we moved in, knowing that it was a gated community, the first thing that pops into our head is safety. I, I enjoy staying home. I enjoy knowing that when the gates are closed, we're good. I can walk around or we can have the kids, you know, go out, ride the bike. And I'm not really concerned about, you know, somebody coming in. Um, I do want to say that, yes, we do need to, with, with all the incidences that have happened, we are a little concerned of letting the kids go out or, um, you know, or even answering the, the door. I don't want to have to feel that, you know, I can't answer the door, I can't let the kids go out or whatever. Um, it's, it's, the, the 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 issue for us is the safety of our family. The, I, I can probably speak for maybe not, but maybe I can speak for all the mamas that stay home there as well. Um, we could probably say, and I can probably speak for them, is that one thing that we do enjoy is staying when we do, when we do get to stay home that we are safe. And so, if we have those gates closed. Or we have it to ourselves, or we, we do whatever we need to do with that, um, that we can continue to, to feel that way. Right? Um, now, that's, there's another thing that I was going to say about uh, uh, the Halloween. I don't think we've ever stopped anybody from coming in. I mean, Halloween or the, um, what did you say, VR sales? VR sales. We have it open, it's open to the public. And it's because, you know, we, we want that, we, 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 you know, we will do it that, you know, then or whatever, but otherwise we want to be able to kind of keep that closed and invite whoever we need to come in. Um, but, you know, I'd like for you guys to at least sit there and see there's one mama, or actually there's actually how many mamas are there? I have kids there. I think we pretty much have a full, full house of children. Um, so just wanted to just say that and please consider saying something. Hey, you know what? We've got, we've got mama staying home there. We've got kids. We still have babies that are growing up there. And so, um, safety and wanting to keep our family safe. So that, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Lopez. Uh, is there any questions for the commission? All right. Seeing none, hearing none. Uh, Director Hussein, any questions? No, we don't. Director? Okay. And does the applicant have any questions for Ms. Lopez? Uh, no, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Lopez. Are there any other neighboring property owners who wish to speak? Can you confirm it, Commissioner Wright? Nobody. No one in the audience is here as a neighboring property owner. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. All right, is there any members of the general public who would like to, um, who did not receive notice, who would like to speak on this issue? Okay. I'm not seeing any approach to the podium. Thank you. All right, um, now this is the opportunity for the applicant to make any brief final comments or for the commission to ask the applicant any final questions. Uh, Mr. Salazar, do you have any brief final comments to share? Um, I do not, just wanna thank everyone for their time. Um, as, as you said, I didn't realize you guys were a monitoring body and uh, we, we thank you for taking, you know, uh, 
almost you know, like that two and a half, two hours and 15 minutes of your time. We thank you for your consideration. No matter the outcome, uh, we are a community, as um, I think the majority of people have said, that we truly uh, want to uplift our community. We want to be uh, someone who is an example uh, for the rest of the community. Um, I myself uh, still serve part-time in the Mexico Army National Guard. I know I have a beard, but I've been on my leave for a couple of months. And, um, you know, I, I left my town. I came home because I truly want to make a difference. I've worked really hard and I take pride in, in where I live and the people that I live by and serve with. And I truly, truly feel this whole entire thing was a misunderstanding. Um, and, and I agree with Mr. V. Hill and his statement earlier, how the developer and the surveyor missed this and put us all in this unfortunate situation um, is a bummer on all of us. Uh, we, we were all misled as purchasers of homes in this community. If, if we would have known that it wasn't a gated community, maybe some of us would have bought, maybe some of us would, would, wouldn't have, um, but we find ourselves in this situation and um, we just thank you for your time, no matter the outcome, we would really appreciate a recommendation to allow us to take the road back. If that does not seem feasible for legality reasons because you cannot donate it, we would like alternate consideration for you to possibly allow us to keep the gates closed in some type of fashion if you guys decide to keep the road. And so with that, that's those are the two major considerations I'd ask. And again, thank you for all your time. Um, is there any last questions? Any uh, final questions from the commission? I, I, I have maybe a few. Go ahead. Okay, Go ahead. I'll, 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 I'll do the, are you sure? Okay, thank you, Commissioner Quintana. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Salazar. Uh, there's a, just a couple of questions I have that you might be able to answer that, I mean, I'm as a representative of the Homeowners Association or even the president of the Homeowners Association at this time. Uh, you had mentioned that there wasn't a signed road maintenance uh, 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 agreement uh, by the uh, homeowners? Uh, no, sir. Um, when we originally started talking to Mr. Okay. Hilder, uh, yeah, those signed, uh, although whenever mm -hmm. in the packet, I believe, we did uh, get a, a company to come out of Albuquerque to give us a quote of basically the cost that we would incur if we took it back. And that was part of the vote for us to try to take it back uh, as private. So okay. I wouldn't call it a signed agreement, but people got the opportunity to vote on whether or not they wanted to incur that cost. Would, would the community, in your opinion, be uh, willing to sign a road maintenance agreement? Amongst ourselves or with the city? Not, not only a road maintenance agreement. No, with your, amongst yourselves. If, if this road uh, reverts to the homeowners uh, association, then you guys will be responsible for its upkeep and its sharing. So it, it'll not only be a, a road maintenance agreement, it'll be a sharing agreement also. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so also uh, from, from, from bringing this to the commission and ho hoping that, uh, that it is uh, recommended that the road does revert back to or that the road reverts to the, the homeowners association, uh, you would be agreeing to vacating the public road easement and dedicating the road easement to the homeowners association, in which case the, the road maintenance and shared use agreement would, would kick in. You guys would be solely responsible for that. Now that doesn't include the, uh, the utilities easement. That utilities easement is good, it would have to stay intact and that utilities easement would be dedicated to the city and again, you would probably have to rededicate that to the city, uh, the for the, for the underground sewer, uh, whatever whatever other utilities are are in there. Uh, the plat was signed by several people, uh, utilities, I believe it, it was. Uh, thought I'd seen a signature line for a bunch of bunch of uh, utilities, and I did. Yeah, it's it's signed by GTE at the time as GTE by Hemes, by public service and by the Española Cable Vision, and two of these no longer exist, but they, they would have to be signed off again for that purpose. And again, again, this is my my uh, my thinking that it may have to be surveyed again as an easement for dedication. Okay, uh, and again, the dedication would be an easement for utilities and utilities only. And it's it's going to be a, a drawn out process. Uh, 
to get this uh, dedicated as a private road. We can't just say, yeah, let's give it to them as a private road. We recommend it. And, it, and, and, and I'm hoping that the, the city doesn't say, yeah, okay, we got the power to do that. Uh, when in fact it's dedicated to the public, the public has the right to go in through there. And I, and I pose the question again, how can it be vacated with the public? Uh, and the answer to that was, was, I don't know, that's your job, you know, but really, uh, how can it be uh, dedicated? I mean, I mean, vacated so that the public realizes that, that it no longer is a, 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 a public road. Uh, the only way I can think of is if you post it in the paper so the public has notice and they, they, they have no excuse, basically. Uh, give it a, a time frame, maybe 30 days, uh, and uh, then go forward. Uh, that would be part of a condition in, uh, uh, to, to getting this thing uh, privatized. Uh, and again, this is probably a question for the director, uh, if he knows if that is the process in doing this. Uh, otherwise, uh, I think that uh, I think that that's all I have, Mr. Salazar. Uh, what do you think? Uh, thank you for your time, and 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 I completely agree. You know, uh, we got to do the due process, being that we've already come this far in the process. Uh, as far as notifying the community or the the, the public that they are going to give up an asset, um, unfortunately, I don't think the public is even aware that they've had this asset this entire time. Um, but still, does not mean that they should be given the opportunity to know that they have this asset and they might uh, possibly be giving it up. Okay. All right. Uh, I think this meeting was was posted and it was also posted in the paper. And I think that the public has been notified as far as what the intent uh, is uh, for this road, whether it's going to be remain public or not. And, uh, and I think that that's maybe part of the process. We will have to discuss that with the with the director to see what he thinks, and it may and, and it may serve as that public notice. Uh, but uh, either way, uh, again, someone uh, one of the one of the commissioners had mentioned what kind of counsel you had received, and you had mentioned uh, 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 reviewing some of the uh, the gated community bylaws uh, uh, in Tisuki. Uh, one of the things that I would recommend is that, uh, and again, it would be be a, a, a condition, is that you do seek legal counsel on this to uh, to realize uh, what what uh, what can we do, how can we do this. And can they draw up the necessary documents in order to dedicate the easement, as well as, as well as uh, to the to the uh, to the city utilities, as well as uh, have the city uh, dedicate this road, this easement to the homeowners association? Uh, if that's uh, I, I, you know food for thought, great. I hope you, you mull it over, um, as it is would be a condition. Uh, hopefully, a condition that we can work with that that that. Uh, this this uh, commission can can impose. I think that's all I have, and, and if that's all you have, Mr. Salazar, I thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Commissioner Vigil. Uh, are there any other questions, Commissioner Quintana? Yes, Mr. Salazar. Um, because we have an opinion from the land use attorney about it being a public. Uh, shall I say, city-owned property. And maybe uh, Ms. Director uh, Mohammed could also chime in on this. I would, I would really like to see you guys open to the idea to do the research and have an open conversation about purchasing the sense that I believe the city can sell their own properties. Would that not be right? The city should definitely sell that property. Okay. You know, I can't sit here and tell you, yes. but I, I can't tell you if it would be cost effective or not. Okay. But the more that I've heard, the more I'm leaning towards that because it would basically eliminate any conversation or inference of donation. I mean, it's not being donated, you're paying for it. Okay. So um, I would encourage you all, and maybe in a motion, that would be a condition to, to do that. I don't know, uh, because I don't know what the end result would be. 
Okay. But I haven't heard from anybody that has gotten up to speak that they even think that's an idea to pursue. I think for that to be something to consider, first off, you know, you'd have to get what the city's idea of, of the purchase price would be and whether or not, like you said, that would be cost effective. We're essentially buying something back that was given to the city by the developer, which we bought lots from. Um, so not saying we're close to the idea that that could be a viable solution. I just think it would be very dependent on how much the city would want to sell the property for. If it would be a, a technicality where the city is saying, you know, we'll sell it to you for a thousand dollars and, you know, you guys get your road back because we can't donate it to you. We'll write you a check right now for a thousand dollars because we have that in petty cash. But if it's going to be a 30, 40, 50 thousand dollar expense, then we have to basically go to the governing body, vote on it. And then, you know, even if it goes on majority vote, you know, we have family members here, uh, myself included, that, you know, incurring the cost of that substantial um, just might not be viable. And so I, consciously, I would feel bad putting that even up for a vote to put people in a position where they would be forced to then buy something back. Because the way we work is if, if, if we want to do an extraordinary expense, we vote on it. If it passes, then they have to basically pay us that. And if they don't, then we have to put a lien on their home. And I just do not want to go down that route on such a substantial expense. And I would not encourage you to go down that, that road unless you are fully educated on what that uh, what the purchase price would be. be. Yeah. Okay. So I was, uh, again, and maybe I'm just. But I do appreciate you proposing that. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that for all I've heard, that seems to be a solution if, in fact, it truly is doable. Definitely, we, we would definitely be con considered that uh, based on the purchase price of, of, the, of the property. Okay. So not close to the idea. And thank you for proposing that. Sure. Because it might make things easier in this process. Yeah, I, that's not to say, especially if you have to go through finance authorities and things like that, that it can be uh, many steps, but sometimes we have to do that to accomplish our goals. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair, no more questions. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Quintana. Any other questions from the commission? All right, seeing none, hearing none. Um, it is 826. We'll go ahead and close um, the session for public comment. Um, and now we are, thank you, uh, Mr. Salazar. You may take a seat now. Right. Now we will. Um, Entertain any any motions from the commission or any further discussion, um, to because you asked the question, Commissioner Quintana, about looking for solutions, and I think Commissioner Hill alluded to that. But um, like Commissioner Wright said, um, there is a distinct anti-donation clause as part of the uh, New Mexico Constitution. Um, so what that means. And of course, I, I deal with this sort of issue uh, in my line of work as well, is that public property can only be um, vacated or, or dispensed at fair market value. Now, there are exceptions to that, and, but they're, they're tied to uh, local economic development uh, statutes, uh, but this is not within that realm. Um, so again, just to remind the commission, the request that was noticed here tonight was for the transfer of ownership of a public street, of a public right of way. So that's the issue at hand um, and whether we're gonna to recommend to the governing body um, approval, denial, um, what have you. So that is, the, that is our task at hand currently. Uh, any other, any other thoughts or comments, uh, or is there a motion? Commissioner Wright. Mr. Chair, for discussion purposes, I'll make a motion. Uh, what's your case number? Again, this is a recommendation to the governing body. Um, regarding case number 2022-2, which is a request for transfer of ownership of the street public right-of-way 
for the residents of the Los Arbolas subdivision. Mr. Chair, I would move that we recommend denial of this transfer of ownership um, under the grounds that it's unconstitutional in the state of New Mexico. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Wright. Uh, there is a motion for denial. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Chair, for the we have a second. Was that you, uh, Vice Chair? Was Commissioner Quintana. <clears throat> I think it was Commissioner Quintana. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Quintana. We have a, a motion. Commissioner Wright, say that again, please. Commissioner McHill had said something, but I couldn't catch it. I wasn't, wasn't sure if that was the second or not. I think Thank we have a motion and a second. So we're at a point where we could have discussion. So Commissioner Hill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I appreciate, uh, appreciate the floor. Thank you, fellow commissioners. Uh, what I was gonna say was I was gonna second the motion uh, for the sake of discussion. Uh, this, this uh, I have a question for, for, um, for Commissioner Wright and and uh, that question is, can we apply a condition to this uh, that does uh, take into account the verification of uh, its constitutional its constitutional right and value? Yeah. Uh, in other words, can we verify that that is the case that uh, because of the constitution, because because of um, the possibility of violating the violating uh, that part of the constitution, uh, we we deny this. Uh, how can that be verified? And are you sure? Are you absolutely sure? In other words, that's what I'm asking. Uh, Commissioner V Hill, I, I'll respond. And if Commissioner Wright wants to take it further, um, we do have testimony from Director Hussein uh, mm -hmm. stating, and in, in his staff report from the city attorney um, saying that um, giving away public right of way is, is not allowed. Um, it doesn't use the word, con you know, there's not a constitutional term used, but um, you can refer that refer to that in your, in the staff report. Um, okay. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Commissioner Wright. Um, that's all. That's all I have for uh, for this. Any further discussion? All right. Seeing none. Seeing none. I would like to explain my motion to the public and and what we're doing here. Okay. Well, go ahead, Commissioner Wright. Thank you. So again, there is, I mean, I work for local government as well. Um, I happen to do GIS data and things like that, but I, I can confirm, I don't know this, the actual constitutional site, uh, but there is the anti-donation clause. That's the reason for my recommendation. And I also making this recommendation because this breaks a precedent within this municipality for subdivisions to, that it, when someone subdivides their land, the city puts an obligation on that developer to get the roads up to speed and to get the water and sewer services put in there in order for the city to service it. That's a precedent that existed and again, as evidenced by this plat for at least the last 22 years in the city of Espanola, um, based on this 2001 approval. Um, that's one of my reasons for motion for this motion is, is there's actually rumor of subdivisions coming in. And I'm very hesitant to set a precedent that these developers aren't going to be responsible for doing that 
uh, and instead transferring it to us, the taxpayers and residents of the city to do this. The city's having a hard enough time putting utilities out to North Prince that they annexed years ago. It is, a, that's the reason for doing this is it's incumbent upon these developers who are gonna make a profit off of selling these lots to all of you to actually put that infrastructure in the ground for the benefit of the community that they're, that these houses and subdivisions are becoming part of. Um, that being said, that, that's the reason why I made this motion, but I would also encourage you one of the things, if you were told that you're not allowed to lock, I have lock gates, and that's really the basis of this, which that was the basis of most of your testimony when we started this a couple hours ago, that's the way to address this, is get the city code changed to do that and come to us, even if even if a director, I don't care if it's the previous director or director, interim director who's saying here, everyone in this town has the right to appeal a decision of the of the land use director and to this body and then if you're not happy with comes out of this body which are by the way again all volunteers it goes to the city council ultimately the city council is a policy maker here and again that's why all we can do is make a recommendation tonight this body doesn't have authority we're not the elected officials of this town only the governing body in the, in the city council can make a decision about the disposition of this property. You're still going to have to go before them, but I would, and, and in terms of what Commissioner B. Hill was suggesting, I mean, we could rec make a recommendation along with this recommendation to deny that, that the city council consider allowing, if it's not allowed under the current code, let's fix the code to allow private communities with public infrastructure inside it. I mean, that's that's the real problem in here, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and let's do that. I mean, that's one of the things this commission has been dealing with is we absolutely understand our zoning code is, is broken. Um, we need to rezone. We get rezoning cases all the night, and there's a group here patiently waiting to hear a rezoning for the betterment of this community. Um, and I would all urge all of you to participate in that. And, and I would be willing to amend my motion to add something like that is that, is that if, if the problem is the lock gate, that, that the city in this, that again, this planning commission can't do it by itself, but we can recommend that. And we have code changes that we're looking at tonight, as a matter of fact. Uh, to move forward for some of the, the easy fixes that are broken. <laughs> um, so with that, I don't know if uh, if I should amend my motion at this point, fellow commissioners, but that, that's why I've made this motion at this point. And, and if, we, if we feel like we need to make a recommendation, I would consider that a friendly amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Wright. Um, and you bring up a good point. Um, you know, there's, you know, future development, and then there's existing development. And I think even if we could approve this request, um, what kind of precedent would that set for all the other subdivisions in the city? Gates, Chacoma Vista, Valley Estates, you know, could they see this? Well, that's a sweet deal. The city just gave away property so that you could restrict access, um, we want that too, you know. And so, you know, what does that look like, and, and what president does that set? Um, so that that that's an interesting um, uh, situation. I think that I think even if we could approve this, um, we would put the city in an interesting situation. Now that being said, um, when you know, private organizations like HOAs do own um, private roads. Um, can an HOA dissolve? Can they cease to function? And then will the city be looked at to say, hey, you know, we can't maintain this anymore. We need to give this back to you so that it could, you know, re re 
revert back to the public, uh, to a public right of way for city um, operations and maintenance. So this brings up a lot of interesting questions. So um, there is a motion on the floor in a second. Um, and I'll ask if there's any further discussion. Uh, Commissioner Wright noted that he's willing to amend his motion. Um, would the I think it was Commissioner Quintana, uh, are you in favor of the amended motion? Would Would you restate that, Commissioner Wright, again? Please. Is, is that your? Is that still your? Is that still your? I don't think I made an amendment, but I'm willing. Is that still your intention. But it, um, so I guess my motion was to recommend denial for the transfer of ownership. Uh, I would amend that motion to further recommend that the, uh, that the city allow gated communities um, within the city limits. Even if that includes uh, city owned property behind the gate. That makes sense, to everybody? I think so, but also consider, Commissioner Wright, that we, within current city code, um, gates for the purpose of obstructing public access is not allowed in our code. So that would be the recommendation is to is to look at the code and change the code. And, and we are making that recommendation to staff. The current action for the commission has to be forwarded to the governing body. Because um, that's that's the only one who can make this decision for transfer of ownership. And it's it's their decision. I mean, it's certainly a recommendation that, that I think we look at it. And what I understood from our discussions over the last few months, and I realize there's a change of administration, um, is that the that code, that a serious look at a code fixes and, and fixing the zoning um is a priority for has been for this commission i think for the current planning staff i mean it's it's something we need to do so the recommendation would be to make the yeah to, to look at code amendments to see if this is something that the governing body would consider again that's a policy issue policy decision for the governing body not for this body or any subsequent constitution of the planning and building commission. <laughs> we may not be here. <laughs> we serve at the pleasure of the mayor and the city council. So. Thank you, Commissioner Wright. Um, so we, we do have a, a motion and a second on the floor. Um, since you're our quasi-parliamentarian, I think still, <laughs> Commissioner Wright, um, do we need to vote on that motion as it stands? Or if we get approval from the, the commissioner who seconded the motion, um, can we act on that amended motion? Can you clarify that for me? Yes, I did. I did amend my motion if, if Commissioner Quintana or Vigil, who I think both seconded were in favor. Then we can consider that as the final. I recognize. I recognized Commissioner Quintana as the seconder. Uh, Commissioner Quintana, are you good with the revised motion? I'm willing to second the revision. I second the revision. Okay, thank you, Commissioner the, Quintana. The amended motion. Any further discussion? Commissioners? All right, Director Hussein, take the roll, please. 
Commissioner In favor of the motion. Commissioner Wright. In favor of the amended motion. Commissioner Posados. In favor. Commissioner Cantana. In favor. Commissioner Anissa Martinez. In favor of the amended motion. Commission Chair, Mr. Martinez. Uh, I will abstain, Director, for sake of any perceived um, issues that the applicant has stated. So uh, just to keep the, the vote clean, I'll go ahead and abstain on this vote. Thank you, Chairman. This motion was passed. Okay. The motion passes to deny uh, with some recommendations. Um, Recommended now. Voted unanimously when one of, with one abstention. Yes. Thank you all for your attendance here tonight. Um, we have one more case. Uh, I'll go ahead and adjourn for a five minute recess and we can catch our breath here a little bit and we will rejoin at 8.50 p.m. Yeah. I
All right, folks, are we ready to resume? I think they cut us off again. Yep. No background noise. <laughs> <laughs> Director Hussein, can you hear me? Please try, try again. Are we ready to resume, Director? All right. All right, we hear you. Are we ready to resume? Not quite. We're waiting for uh, Earl Wright. He'll be under. Okay. All right, commissioners, let's go ahead and call this meeting back to order. We're on item number seven, two. Case number 2022-3 rezone request, Rio Reba County on behalf of property owner request rezone of vacant land at the intersection of Calle Hacienda and Calle Chamisal, UPC 1-047-121-364-090 to Central Business District B-3. The property is currently zoned RM-PUD residential multifamily. All right, commissioners, we will go ahead and open the public hearing at this time. And commissioners, is there anyone who has had, who has a conflict of interest or that has had ex parte communication related to this case? All right, see none, hearing none. We will go ahead and identify and swear in the parties. Uh, Director Hussein, uh, do we have the parties and the applicant here with us today? Yes, we do. Yes. All right. We will ask that they stand so we can uh, swear them in. Can you tell me who, who is there representing uh, Rio Reba County and the applicant? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, we have Mr. Trujillo, the county attorney, and Ms. Ms. Salazar, and Sanchez. Ms. Sa uh, my apologies, Ms. Sanchez and, and Mr. Alves, uh, Alves, representing the Rio Riva County. And, and I really appreciate their patience. All right. All right. Well, welcome County Manager Sanchez, or Mr. Valdez, and Mr. Trujillo. Um, if you could uh, raise your right hand and we'll swear you in. Uh, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give will be the truth? I, I do. Yes, I do. 
Yes, thank you. And staff is already sworn in, so we don't need to go there. Um, are there any other parties here for the case, uh, Director? I don't believe there are any parties here. Not on the Zoom, either present in the, in the planning chamber. Great, thank you. Okay, Director, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Chairman Martinez and the honorable members of the commission. Uh, as for our code, the, the notice for the public hearing was posted in the Rio, uh, Rio Grande Sun 15 days prior and the agenda was posted accordingly as well. And the notice of public hearing was also posted on the property according to our code and the planning commission requirements. So that this, we're bringing this reasonable request on the request of Rio Lima County on behalf of the owner, which is Tamisa Corporation. And this reasonable request is for the two vacant properties as for our zoning code, the UBC, one zero four seven one two one three six four zero nine zero. The applicant, which is Rio Riva County, is requesting to rezone this property from multi-family residential to central business district R three. The and this property consists of nine point three seven two acres, and it is as currently rezoned for the residential purposes. We had our DRT review meeting and we analyzed this property. And this is reasonable request is on their bond, geo bond that the county approved uh, a few years ago to establish a rehabilitation center and a nursing facility for the people who went through different surgeries so that it's a transition place where the people can go through their normal life. And I and I believe that's a very important step to work to provide a better services to our community. And this reason would be a step towards the, the establishment of that, that geo bond that I believe they, the, the county resident approved. But uh, as far as the, can you go to the to that? So here, here you can see the actual boundaries of the properties. Go, go to the next one. And here we see that it is the, you, how it is zoned. It is consistent adjacent. Director. Yes, sir. Can you, can you share your screen so we can see? Yes, we're both sharing it. Thank you. So we see here this RM Calle Chamiso and Calle Hacienda. See this yellow dot line. These are the county. This this is the uh, the parcel that the county is requesting rezone. Can you go to the next slide? This is how it's going to look like when it is closed rezone. So it will coincide with the B2, which is B2 commercial zone and B3. And why B3? Because that's our central district and the, the Presbyterian Hospital. And according to the code, the hospitals are in B3 district. So if it is rezoned to any different zone, the zone district, we, they may have to get a conditional special use permit that is for five years, and then they cannot come back for up five years if it's not approved, they have to pay it down, so which is not a wild option. That's why we, we recommend it that if they want to rezone, they have to rezone it to be free. So it is that hospital is does not have to go through any other uh, any other permits. 
and it would not have any detrimental effect on neighboring properties or the residents. But I, if there is any questions, I stand here for questions. Thank you, Director. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions for Director Hussein at this time? I have a, a few, just some clarifications, Director. So um, on the staff report and on your prior illustration, um, there's some discrepancies with the acreage on the track that's proposed for rezoning. Can you clarify that, uh, whether it's seven, 11, or nine acres that we're looking at rezoning here? Yes, uh, sure. This, this, there was a discrepancy because of certain uh, confusion about what actually it says on our zoning map, but we concluded and we double checked and confirmed that it is 9.372 acres. Now, the, the, what's on the screen now shown as proposed D3, is that considered one lot or several lots? How is it comprised? So as for our record and what we have, there are two lots, but they have the same UPC. But here is a very interesting thing. Whenever there are two different lots, they have different UPC address because they're, that's a unique address for any lot. But I believe that it was approved to uh, a, a different. Uh, so what we have here, you will see here uh, a survey plat showing one, one parcel. But when we have researched again, this, this small lot that you see here with, with ROI, with, uh, with this with 807 Kayach Mesel, it was subdivided into three lots, which is not updated on our zone yet, on, on our zoning or the, I mean, on our record yet. But it was, divided into three lots and actually at this point it stays at four lots. One bigger lot and the three so small lots in the corner of Kali Hacienda. So there's four legal lots of record is what you're saying? Correct. Okay and I'll ask the county uh, representatives to touch on that as well, just for verification when it's their turn. So just a heads up there. Um, it looks like there's a parcel that maybe was originally part of the tract, um, but that's not included in the rezone. Uh, it's currently that RM parcel between B2 and the proposed B3, is that correct? Correct. And that's a that's a legally owned separate parcel from this one. Correct. Okay. That's part of eight one nine Riverside. Okay. I think that's my questions at this time. Are there any other questions from the commission? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Commissioner Wright. Kind of following up with your questions, um, it is a little confusing of what, what lots we're actually considering. Um, and what was, uh, what was shown on this exhibit, which is the yellow line, that is not the actual area being considered. I mean, it's close, but it's not the lots of legal record. So, Correct. So it, there could be some changes, but as for our zoning map, and as for address map, the record that we have, this is what it shows. But. Right, but that's showing. That's why we mentioned the UBC for those lots. And that's what we address that. These are the lots with this UBC, according to our zoning or address map, according to our record, we're requesting reason for these lots. And so the records of Rio Reba County Assessor 
show that UPC is, it is two lots, but it's shown as a 14.93 acre parcel. That is, they may have a different record, but we are going to, they, I mean, they could well, be. the county's applicants, so I'll save that question for now. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's a little confusing um, of what, what lots are actually concerned, and I think that's critical because that affects the rights with these properties. Right. Um, so given that, we'll, we'll get that clarified with further testimony. Um, I also noticed in the BRT reviews, mm -hmm. uh, let me find those real quick. I don't know if the applicant is aware of the BRT reviews. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's see. Uh, Public Works micro, uh, recommended conditions um, of sorts. Essentially, every member of the DRT team asked for conditions, um, including wastewater, water, and fire. Mm -hmm. um, do we have a summary of what those conditions are? So this condition actually, so this, when there is a residential development and a commercial development, their infrastructure could be a little different depending on what the infrastructure they wanted to develop. I think that that were just to consider for the reason, it would be more effective when the infrastructure development and when the actually site plan comes to the city planning commission. Then we can recommend, okay, if, if you're putting a 100 bedroom hospital or 50 bedroom hospital, you have to come with this sort of size of the wastewater or water lines, or you have to have this sort of hydrants that could actually <coughs> supply 35 or 100 gallons per, per minute per second. So at this point, I'm not, and this was just to make a bear the applicant that this may be may come up when they bring the site plan. Right, but do we have a summary of those conditions recommended by each city department? Yes. Is that available for the record tonight, or is it just these DRT notes? Just these DRT notes. So that's what we we made within the, the packet because these are not final; they're subject to change depending on what we bring. Because if there's it's approved now. They may bring up a different site plan or different infrastructure, then we have to change those. Well, that, These that just leads to another question: We don't have a master plan for this development at this point, do we? We do not. But well, we, thank you for that. Um, the other question is: Is to take this to V three mm -hmm. zoning? Why V three? I, I already mentioned because our code says the hospital would be V three. And that's the only zone the hospitals allowed in? That is, so our second list is with all other hospitals that are, but there are some dispensaries and something that are allowed in other, but the hospitals are particularly in B3. Okay. Um, and then one of the things, this is one of the only near very few areas that I'm looking for my code map now. Mm -hmm. um, of the city that actually has zoning for multifamily residential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, as evidenced by that map, this rezoning request in and of itself may, may not result in spot zoning. However, we see at the southwest corner of that, there's a parcel of land that's left out. Is that zoning for that parcel the same as what's on the east side? Is that also multifamily residential? Correct. That's R dash M. Yes. So in a way, we have a we have a problem that actually it's not the zoning itself, but the effect of the zoning is creating spot zoning on that parcel. It, it potentially could, but the, it, to my understanding, since the part of the parcel it is in, in our, if you see here. In 819, the river, North Riverside Drive, half the parcel is residential, half is commercial. So that's how it is actually. Yeah, so I understand that. 
So if that's if that's the result is is we end up with a little pocket. I ain't connected to anywhere else. Do we know the acreage of that little pocket? I do not, because that's part of our, our the other parcel. It's not a parcel itself. Okay. Um, and then also what we have to the south and actually across the street on Calle Hacienda, that's all residential zone, correct? correct? So one of the, that's one of my concerns with this rezoning request as well, is we're putting one of the most intense uses immediately adjacent to residential. One of the things with our ROI zoning is to actually allow its purpose as transitional land use in the overall concept of the city of Espanola zoning. Um, but I'm looking at this. So this is taking the bulk. This proposal is going to take the bulk of multifamily residential zoning in the city and, and take that away. I the only I, other places I see this is just <laughs> south of here along via the Norte <coughs> or via Norte. That area can, can is there any way we can pull up the city zoning map? I'm trying. We're having a lot of uh, internet connectivity issues. So. Well, I've got, I have got to circulate for the commission to then see. There's a small track on the west side off of um, off Industrial Boulevard, just up the street from the county complex. Um, I, that's the only multifamily zone. I, I personally agree with you, but the, to, to answer your question, our zoning has not been updated since almost a few decades. And we should have brought some mixed use and multifamily zoning to our city. We have actually targeted different parcels and different areas which we are planning to rezone. Actually, the applicant is the owner of the property. I would not disclose, but we have some housing projects that are in line and they have to to to, to get rezone to but let's I'll correct that with the applicant, but I don't believe we were aware that the county has taken title to this property. But we'll get that with the applicant. Right. But I mean our zoning needs to be updated. It was zoned, I think, about 30, 40 years ago. Right. And I understand that in total agreement with you, but my question is this is one of the only areas. With multi-family zoning. Correct. That's all I needed to hear. Thank you. Uh, that's the end of my questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Wright. Uh, any other questions from the commission? Okay, see none, hearing none. Um, we'll ask the applicant, anybody from Reba County at this time have any questions for staff? This is your opportunity to cross-examine staff on their testimony. Um, after this, you'll be allowed to present um, your case as the applicant. But for now, any any questions for staff? No, Chairman Martinez. Thank you. And there doesn't seem to be any neighboring property owners there at this time, uh, Director. No, we don't. Thank you. Yes. All right. Um, but I'm a property holder in the general area, I guess. Great. The general public. We'll get to that. Just clarifying who is here, Mr. Chair, in the audience. Okay. Do we have a member of the general public here? Uh, yes, two members. Do you both want to speak? Okay. Just one um, there, there's an opportunity for members of the general public to to uh, to present uh, later in in uh, this process. So we'll we'll get there soon. All right. For now, uh, we'll have the applicant present. If you could state your name and and go ahead and get started. 
Thank you, Chairman and uh, Honorable Planning Commission. This is uh, Don Trujillo, and I am the County Attorney for Rio Arriba County. And this application came about as a result of the general election of 2019, the voters of Rio Arriba County overwhelmingly approved a general obligation bond in the amount of $12 million for the construction of a skilled nursing and rehabilitation facility. So I'll first start off by noting that, uh, that the project, a skilled nursing and rehabilitation facility, which was designed to replace the loss of the Hacienda de Salud when it, when it closed and uh, did not reopen and the owners placed a non-compete clause, preventing it from ever being used as a nursing home in the future. Uh, that general obligation bond uh, strictly binds the county towards expenditures that are specific to that project. In other words, there is no other project that the county could legally use those funds for other than for the uh, anything that's specifically related to the skilled nursing and rehabilitation facility. Uh, so that was approved in, in 2019. And since then, the county has been slowly but surely moving this project forward uh, and had identified these vacant tracts of land uh, as potential viable sites for the skilled nursing and rehabilitation facility. Uh, to that end, the county approached, the, uh, actually I think they contracted for an appraisal report of those specific pieces of property and then began negotiations uh, at the formal recommendation of the county commission with the landowners. Uh, the county commission, the county manager uh, and the uh, county's municipal advisor, as well as project coordinator, had engaged in those negotiations with the landowner and had settled on sort of preliminary terms for uh, the potential acquisition of these pieces of land for the purpose of locating the skilled nursing and rehabilitation facility there. And of course, uh, Upon, upon entering into those negotiations, it was uh, discussed that in order for this project to move forward in a meaningful way, uh, the county would, uh, the zoning for that particular piece of property would have to be changed. And so the county sought the approval of the owner, uh, which is the Chamisa Corporation, and the Chamisa Corporation granted authority for the county to submit this application for a rezone for this particular piece of property. Uh, at the recommendation of Director Hussein, the county sought a B3 uh, zoning, rezone, uh, sought a, a, a rezone to B3 uh, for the explanation that B3 was the only zoning designation in the city that supported or at least specifically mentioned a hospital as uh, a, a viable or permitted use. Uh, the county did think that ROI was appropriate, but of course, and you look at the at the code, which has understandably not been updated for a significant period of time, ROI did not include anything that could be reasonably interpreted to be a hospital. Uh, so the proposed use is a B3, at, and that is what the county and the seller are uh, requesting from the city is that, that those particular pieces of land be rezoned to B3 uh, so that, that this project can then move forward with the acquisition of this property uh, by the county and then beginning the process of design and development of the skilled nursing and rehabilitation facility in that location uh, and then moving forward towards construction and operation. And so I know that there'll probably be plenty of questions about uh, the the specifics of this, so I'll go ahead and yield to those questions now. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Trujillo. Um, just as a, a follow-up to my question to staff, um, how many legal lots of record are within this parcel as, uh, as it currently stands, to your understanding? How many legal lots of record well, I think that, you know, I, 
My answer would be my, my answer would be four legal lots of record. Uh, that being said, I, I do I would not disagree that it is two legal lots of record at the current time, uh, based upon the the recorded surveys that are in place and based upon the county assessor's data upon which the city zoning map is based. Uh, that being said, the acreage of the land that the county is specifically requesting is firm. It is 9.372 acres. Uh, it is the parcels that are located immediately to the west of the uh, former Hacienda Salud, as well as to the south. I, I, and that, that acreage is exactly what the county contracted for in its appraisal report. Uh, the appraisal report contemplated five legal lots based upon an unrecorded survey in the possession of the seller. Uh, that unrecorded survey obviously uh, is, does not have the, you know, the, the, does not legally change the, the constitution of those lots. Uh, but uh, what is in the records of the county assessor is a lot line adjustment signed by Richard Cook in 1998 that split the, the, the lots just to the west of the ROI into three legal lots. Uh, that information is not reflected in the records of the county assessor, although that plat and the lot line adjustment is recorded and does bear recordations and signatures, but um, for whatever reason, it has not been updated in the assessor's database. So, so uh, let, me, let me just finish that up one more. The chairman, let, let me just finish that up by saying this that survey? in the appraisal report. I'm sorry, um, Commissioner Wright. Can you? I didn't. You referred to it to a survey that's been recorded. Uh, yes. What survey would that be? I mean, it's not a certain what it is. It's a lot line adjustment, and it's a lot line adjustment for the Chamisa court. And this this document is recorded in the Rio River County Clerk's Office, um, but it for again whatever reason uh, the it only the Rio River County Assessor's Records upon which the city zoning map is based only shows one lot there. Although I believe that this, this lot line adjustment was dated that plot. Uh, 1998. Um, That's good, just a year expired. Yeah, 1998, I December 4th. Thank you, Mr. Chair, my questions were just on that particular piece. I defer back to you. Okay. Well, there have been copies for the commission if you'd I like to have a few. <laughs> yeah. I, I think you'll find with. Great, uh, um, okay. Mr. Chair, I apologize. I can, Chair. I can have these emailed to you. Um, I think you'll find that sort of running with the same theme from the previous hearing that uh, eight by 11 copies of surveys are, are difficult to read, but uh, you know, I blew it up and, and it's, it's recorded with the county clerk's office. And I've had these discussions with the assessors and, and from time to time, things do get overlooked. Things are not uh, always 100% accurately mapped but um, what this shows is that the that that lot was split into three lots back in 1998. It's never been updated. But um, going back to what Director Hussein stated is that the the acreage is firm. The UPC code does reflect that there's you know this specific pieces of property owned by the Chummy Support, and so the county does feel that that there is some certainty as to this request. Okay, thank you, Mr. Trujillo. Um, and that was just for clarification because um, 
of course, this is a first step in a in a in a process, right? Um, rezoning is one. Uh, the next would be the sale and the survey associated with the sale and purchase by the county. Uh, so at that point, it may have to be resurveyed. Um, but is there kind of is it envisioned that the lot will also in, incorporate a lot consolidation uh, to make it one lot? Uh, that's a good question, Mr. Chairman. And you know, to be honest, I hadn't I hadn't thought of that. But um, off the top of my head, I would say that yes, absolutely. If this were to proceed, that the survey would seek to consolidate those lots into one. Okay, and not not to get way too far ahead of ourselves here either, but um, the the that area is bisected by a by a city street. Um, so is it envisioned that there, there may be different uses on either side of that street, or will there be um, different campuses? I guess envisioned as part of this complex, or maybe even a realignment of the road to serve the the purposes of the development. Yeah, Chairman Martinez, I, Again, I wish I could give you, you a better answer other than that. I think that at this point, uh, the county would leave that to, you know, paid consultants to determine how best to locate that facility and whether or not, as the chairman mentioned, there would be separate uses on the other side of the road or whether there would be a realignment of the road. I think that it's, you know, pretty much sort of a blank slate to for for those qualified individuals to make the determination of how best to use that square footage. Okay, thank, thank you for that. I know that's, a, again, a down the road question, but, um, and, and I wanna thank you for acknowledging um, that with your response that we did receive from uh, Director Hussein on the criteria, we did address um, that there are noted infrastructure, infrastructure improvements that may, may be needed to serve the development. Um, those were some of the comments that the city's development review team noted. Um, so again, that's that's kind of a down the road question. You'll get to that uh, during the site plan review. Um, but I'm happy that you acknowledge that in your uh, in your letter, um, because you know invariably uh, whatever you put there, you'll have to look at the at the infrastructure and the utilities that may have to serve it. Um, so thank you for doing that. Pleasure. Um, are there any other questions from the commission? Yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Commissioner V. Hill, and then we'll go to Commissioner Wright. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for seeing the floor, Mr. Wright. Thank you, fellow commissioners. Mr. Trujillo, what book and page number is that plat that you just passed out? Commissioner, it, it is. Uh, book P for plat 1236, page 5975. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Trujillo. That's all I had. I'm just trying to pick it up on my on my database here. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Wright. Okay. Um, Couple of points. One is, as I asked uh, Director Hussein, um, are you aware there's recommendation of con conditions from city, very city departments? Um, Commissioner Wright, I, I didn't know that they would be phrased as conditions of approval. My understanding was that that would be something that would be reviewed in the sort of site plan development, but in a rezone request, it seemed to me like, you know, the, the zoning, what we're, what we're seeking is a change from one zone to another. And that as you progress down towards development, that that's where, sort of like the more specific questions of infrastructure or you know improvements that would need to be made would be more appropriate. So I, I it's a long way of saying that I didn't see them as conditions for the rezone as much as I saw them as signaling that down the road there would be the potential to look at these in more detail because 
we really don't know what's going there where, but at some point that will be more clear, hopefully. Are you are you aware of any of them? No, I was aware. I did I did review them, and that's why okay. I think what Chairman Martinez was just referring to is that in 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 the letter from Ms. Sanchez, we can all kind of acknowledge that in this process, as if it were to progress, there will be you know acknowledging that there will be infrastructure considerations that need to be taken into account, just with any just as with any other development, you know you. Right, and, and, and the reason why I'm asking is, is just to make it clear and, and get it out there on the record that, uh, I mean, Public Works is looking at replacement of manholes, water line upgrades, road upgrades. Commissioner uh, Chairman Martinez spoke about possible realignments or lack consolidations. Um, obviously, uh, Interesting comment from wastewater, but um, which is adequate fire protection and emergency and police services, not sure why that came from wastewater. Um, from water, uh, actually, the recommendation was that needed commissions conditions before rezone. Um, that it needs water and sewer line upgrades throughout, uh, and a question of whether or not the lines would be private. Um, and again, I, I'm just running through these so we have them on the record. Um, fire again, his recommendation was to propose conditional rezone to include fire procession, roadway access, and utilities. Um, and again, infrastructure that we've talked about need to be upgraded. And of course, fire is always looking for staffing. Um, the other one applies to the other case. I just wanted to get that out there because, again, we didn't have a summary of them. And part of what I'm, I'm missing here is kind of a master plan. We're doing a large acreage, but is it the intention that this facility is going to cover those entire almost 10 acres? Uh, Commissioner Wright, I don't think I can answer that because the we're not at the point where the consultants have actually been able to say, this is going to go here, this is going to go there, this is, in other words, we haven't even bought the land yet. I mean, we're about two steps back from- Well, thank you for clarifying that. That was the previous question. Mm -hmm. The ascertain, the assertion was made that it was already owned by the county, but that's not correct. No, but that's the reason of operation. No, it's the Chamisa Corporation. The county is submitting this on behalf. Right. No, I was the authorization. The previous the, testimony right. was that it was owned, already owned by the county, and that there's no evidence of that. So I just wanted to clarify that the, again for the record. It's clarified. The the county does not own this property. The county is in negotiations to buy this property, uh, and through those negotiations, um, it, one of the conditions for moving it forward was that well, the county you know, would likely not buy this property if it's not zoned for the adequate permitted use. And so that's why we're here today. And so I don't think we're at the master plan or even the development plan phase yet. We're in negotiations to purchase this uh, pending, a, you know, more contingent upon a, a rezone to a permissive zoning designation. I like that term. Um, because that's a that's one of my problems with this. B3 zoning is central business district zoning under the Espanola code. Um and again, I think the key is how to figure out how to make this facility happen um, at this location. And and I think putting it in the wrong zone doesn't necessarily fix that problem. And I think they're in it. Again, my attention, I realize there's a bond out there. There's the, the voters of um, Rio Riva County agreed to fund this. Um, so we need to make it happen. That's the will of the people. But I'm also concerned with some of the issues that I brought up and actually 
what is the configuration of lots. I think hopefully Commissioner Beagle could bring that up. I see a city stamp on this, but again, that's kind of irrelevant what the lots are. Mm -hmm. But I think an actual survey of what is getting rezoned is important and, and may end up being a condition from this commission. And again, as you well know, we just recommend, but we'd like to hash it out as best as we can before it goes to the governing body. Um, cause it certainly has to go there, um, to work. Um, Commissioner Rick, can I point something out? Absolutely. There is a survey currently it's unreported, but a survey of this acreage has been performed and it's, I believe it's in the packet because it formed the basis. So that's the one in the appraisal, uh, in the appraisal at the very back. I don't believe that's it. Just to be clear. I don't believe that's it. No. Does it? Well, again, man, it absolutely, absolutely, you got to figure this out. So, well, actually, that may, I thought it was closer to the back. I believe it was. Give my expert Give my expert a look. <laughs> the realtor sees the prayers all the time. You can I actually read them. That's I could chime in real quick. Back. And it may be that it may be that the uh, it may be that the uh, the lots themselves is less of an issue rather than the entire boundary of the area, since it's since we're only we're not looking at a lot split or consolidation, it's more the boundary around the area of the rezone and the property that we're most concerned with at this point. And Chairman Martinez, I, I believe, may chime in, chime in also. Don't have a floor, gentlemen. Chairman. But I'll concede. You did the same to me. <laughs> That's all the point, but we're absolutely right. Right. That's what we're trying to figure out is what are we record re rezoning up? That's, that's key. I know. I think uh, Mr. To, Vigil had something to say. So uh, I'll defer to Mr. Mr. Vigil. Vigil? I believe Chairman uh, Martinez, Commissioner Wright, Commissioner Vigil, that unrecorded survey, I believe, is what the county has been in negotiations to purchase. It's the unrecorded survey that shows um, what purport to be five lots. Right. That was the that was the survey that formed the basis for the appraisal, and uh, that was the the topic of discussion and the negotiations with the seller uh, explained to us what you want in this vicinity. Uh, they showed us the unrecorded survey, the appraisal took into account the unrecorded survey. They're in the process of trying to get that survey signed in and recorded, uh, but as yet it is still an, an unrecorded survey, but the survey was performed and does show that that's, that's the, the acreage that's that's being sought to be rezoned, including sort of the boundaries of it. So I believe, in other words, Chairman Ortiz, it's, it's in the packet of information that was submitted to the, to the, to the council, to the commission, excuse me. Yes, I do, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Trujillo, this survey you talk about, uh, how long has the, the survey been in, uh, in motion? Um, is it currently being surveyed? Is that why it hasn't been recorded? Is it waiting for approval? What's going on? I believe, uh, Commissioner Hill, that what took place is the seller owned a piece of property immediately east of the Food King, and that was probably part of this larger parcel. Mm -hmm. And so they sold that piece of property to pay and save. My understanding is that this unrecorded survey was performed subsequent to that sale in order to delineate what the Chamisa court retained as a consequence of that sale. So if you look at the, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they, can they see that? Um, can I still screen turn? Yes. So I believe what, uh, in, if you see the Food King and the Domino's Pizza and the gas station there right off of Riddler Side Drive, immediately to the east of that it is sort of like a, wouldn't call it rectangular, but it's kind of a, you know, like a semi-rectangular piece there. I believe that was originally part of Chamisa Corporation's holdings. 
they sold that to the pay and save fairly recently. I believe that the deeds were only recorded okay. in February of 2022. Yes. That's correct. Uh, I, I did dig up the plat on that. Uh, plat book Y1, page 222. It does show that that's track 2D, 1.577 acres. Uh, that was done uh, not too long ago, I'd say within the last 100 years, actually. Uh, it looks like uh, December of the 20th of 2018. Um, also, there's been surveys done. This is for, for the satisfaction of the commission. There have been surveys done around this particular area that they are uh, considering uh, for rezoning, uh, which really uh, will define these boundaries through exclusion. So uh, despite that survey not being recorded, I can see just from the research I've done in the last 30 minutes that there are surveys surrounding it. Uh, there are legitimate surveys that have been uh, submitted to county for, uh, for approval and have been, been approved. Some of these surveys go back as far as 1967 that I've, that I've been able to dig up. So if that uh, eases your minds, this property is in existence legally through exclusion. All right, thank you, Commissioner Miguel. Good info. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Trujillo. Thank you. I did have some, some follow-up questions and then I'll-, I'll uh, I still have a question. Go ahead. go ahead, Commissioner Wright. Sorry, um, go ahead. No problem. Uh, one of the other things, and again, not totally relevant to the rezone, uh, but it did come up with um, when we did the rezoning for Darren's place, and that ROI and concerns not only from the public, um, but actually the commission. Is, is the nature of that intersection at uh, Riverside and Calle de Sienda. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's why I'm asking about what is the size of this facility? If this facility is gonna cover the entire almost 10 acres, the traffic generation out of there is gonna be huge. Um, I mean, it's, there's already the apartments back there. There's already Darren's place. Now the school bus route is coming through there. And that, and again, that doesn't have to be done right here, but I think that's something that both the city and the county and state of New Mexico, because that state highway and then DOT are gonna have to consider is actually signalizing that intersection. And then I'm also concerned that this is a one in one out um, situation there. There is right away an easement, but it's not public that extends all the way to McCurdy. Um, but this loop with that concentration is, is, that's the other reason why the master plan, I think is gonna be an issue in doing this. I realize that's kind of cars before the horse and where we are right now, but those considerations need to be made in this. Um, and I just, I just wanted to ask you that question if the county had, had considered that based on our experience with their employees. Uh, yes, Commissioner Wright, I, I would say a few things. Uh, one, that um, it's, it's not where we are in the process. That being said, the county has absolutely had those discussions and uh, is fully, fully intends to engage with the state of New Mexico uh, Department of Transportation, as well as with the city. Uh, to because I think that anybody you know who drives through the Riverside Drive knows that 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 you know particular area uh, is in need of some attention and being a state road uh, you know we feel that DOT is obviously the main stakeholder in it but the county's you know is aware of that and is is fully is fully prepared to you know to discuss that to the greatest extent possible. Well, I believe this will be a public-private partnership. I mean, it, and, and the reality is that question, I mean, if this were de developed at full density of the RM, the residential zoning, the multifamily residential zoning that it's replacing, it'd probably be even worse problem. Right. And, but that's the thing, the developer of this property and that person who is adding the traffic volume to this 
is the one who needs to stand up to the plate. Um, and I think that includes both the city and county. So I just want to get that on the record so that's out there so that both governing bodies understand that. Um, and even though we have a bond out there, um, yeah, certainly that's not what I'm asking for is full design work and eat that up. The key is to get it done. But these are the considerations that are out there. Um, and again, I love the term permissive zoning. I think there's a way to get this done without going to B3 as well, without central business district zoning. I mean, we've got code amendments, simple ones ready tonight, potentially to go to the, the governing body, perhaps at their, well, at their next properly notice meeting. Um, and it could be as simple as, as adding hospitals to the ROI use category. That's a one word edit um, that we might need to do rather than trying to put this square peg in, oh, well, it fits in B3. Let's throw it in that round hole. Let's get it done right if we can. Um, and it, just so you know, that may be where my recommendation is coming from tonight. But, uh, that's all I have, Mr. Chair, for my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Ray. And I'm glad you brought that up. Because I wanted to get I wanted to get uh, the county's take, and I think you mentioned it uh, earlier, Mr. Trujillo, that um, can you compare um, the use at Darren's place, which is zoned as an ROI, with the proposed use of of this area? Is it you know essentially very similar in in ways, um, would, would it be, in your opinion, um, more more appropriate to to zone this area more as an ROI, similar to how Darren's place is currently zoned? Well, I can answer that in I'll answer that in two ways. One, theoretically, and only theoretically or hypothetically, you know, the way I understand ROI is residential, office, institutional, um, and so. Depending on your definition, institutional, I think that medical facilities to me would qualify as institutional. Uh, but the reason why I don't think an ROI uh, rezone tonight would be appropriate is because the ROI does not currently contain anything that, in my opinion, can reasonably inter be interpreted as a medical facility. And so if the if the if the ROI designation if, if it, there's a recommendation or a formal action to to rezone it to ROI, um, I still don't think that the county actually would have the you know the the, the right to use that particular space for uh, the proposed or intended use. Um, I mean, I guess there are certain there are permutations out there, like you know, a, a, you know, an ROI designation, and then there's a you know a change to the code that makes that into a uh, uh, that allows medical facilities or hospitals to be a, an allowed use. Uh, there could also be. Um, I'm trying to think. It's, I mean, I, I think that if if hospitals had been under ROI, there'd been no doubt we would have you know submitted for for an ROI rezone. The fact is that it's not in there at the, at the current time. You know, I think that there's even flexibility in the code in terms of you know public interest, uh, you know, accommodation, but I, I'm not sure how how far that could be taken. I'm not, I'm not sure that, that an ROI designation at this point would, would serve the county and move this particular negotiation forward. Um, and I think that unfortunately, because of the timing of the bonds, which I, I think the county you know, municipal advisor is more qualified to elaborate on than I am, I'm not sure that the county could afford to delay this project until that, that code is updated. Um, so I think there's a lot of moving parts, but at, at the present time, there's no interest in developing this piece of property 
in any meaningful commercial way outside of the skilled nursing and rehabilitation facility or hospital. So I'm not sure I mean, if it's, it seems like it's pretty clear as mud right now, um, but the application is for a rezone to a B3. So I think that's kind of where the county would have to stand. Okay, thank you for that. And, and along those lines, um, that was great clarification, by the way. Um, and, and therein lies kind of our conundrum at times with um, uses and our current zoning code uh, that we really need to address. Um, but until then, um, would the county be, um, I could envision um, two specific conditions on this um, approval, one being um, that the con that the approval would be on the condition that the uh, sale of the property to the county um, go through. The second condition would be that uh, it would only be for a skilled nursing and rehabilitation facility. Would those two conditions be potentially acceptable to the county? This. The, se the second, the second, um, the second condition uh, is is a you know a no brainer for the county as long as there is a specific mention that this would be a skilled nursing and rehabilitation hospital. Um, I believe that was the term that was used on the ballot and which the which the voters approved. I don't believe it was skilled nursing rehabilitation facility. I believe it was a hospital. Hospital. Right, so at the skilled nursing and rehabilitation hospital, uh, I think that condition would be acceptable to the county. Now, in terms of the 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 first one that the property or that the sale move forward, uh, I don't know if the county could necessarily bind itself in that regard. But I can tell you that you know we are we are in in active everyday discussions about this to the point where I'm communicating with the sellers on a, on a daily basis. You know, we did not take the step of signing a purchase and sale agreement um, contingent upon the rezone, but we very we were at the point where we, we very well were going to do that had not it just kind of run out of time with the, with the hearing. But the county does have, you know, just fully represent on the record that it is an active negotiations you know, price has been agreed upon, uh, the acreage has been agreed upon, you know, the county has, you know, the funds available to it, you know, the seller is motivated and the seller wants this use to take place on that piece of property. And I know that, you know, the, you know, the commission is not in the, in the business of, of taking sort of promises, but um, that, you know, to the extent that we can represent that that's actively taking place, um, you know, we, we we represent that to the fullest extent. Thank you, Mr. Trujillo. I, I think just the, the whole purpose of that would be just to ensure that the rezoning would only take effect um, when the property does become the county's. So that, that's kind of what I'm getting at to, to try to address any, um, any reservations about the approval so that it's for the for the owner or for the future owner being the county and for the proposed use for being a, a rehabilitation and a hospital uh, for the bond. So uh, thank you for that. Um, I will ask any other commissioners if they have any other questions. All right, seeing none, hearing none. Um, and I can't see a few of you, so let me make sure. Okay, there you are, Vice Chair. Um, no questions? Okay, thank you. Um, any questions uh, from staff? Mr. Hussein? We don't have any questions. Thank you. All right. And we still don't have any neighboring property owners. Is that correct? No, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you for that. So then, thank you, uh, Mr. Trujillo. Um, 
And I understand there may be some members of the general public. Do you want to speak to this? Hi, uh, my name is Deborah Martinez, and um, I'm I'm not, I'm very hopeful that the um, commissioners do the right thing. Um, there's been occasions where um, we try to, and I think Commissioner Mike said it right. Um, we try to put a round um, peg in a square, and I think doing it right the first time, so there aren't any issues down the road. Um, my concern too is there's a school and there's a lot of traffic. Um, and then there's the apartment complex, you know, on a Friday afternoon. I mean, it's the traffic is unreal on Riverside. So I think the traffic is an issue that you might want to consider. And I just want the, you know, the, this committee to do the right thing right first, you know, first time around, instead of coming back and saying, oh, we didn't, we didn't do this, we should have done that, or we're forcing it because we're on a time scale. And um, there was another thing I was going to say. Well, that's it for now. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Is there any other members of the general public who would like to speak? You've waited this long. <laughs> Since I've been here. Hi. I'm Marcy Davis, and I just came to see what the county had plans for. So, informed citizen, I guess. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Davis. All right. Are there any other members of the public? We're good. Commissioner Wright, give me the thumbs up. Yes. All right. All right. Uh, this is the time where the applicant can go ahead and make any final comments if they would like and address any other questions from the commission. Um, is there any kind of comments from Rio River County at this time? Uh, Mr. Chair, just a comment from the county's uh, financial advisor and project coordinator is that you know the intention to move this forward uh, requires that the county, the intention to move this forward is that for the counties to begin issuing these bonds, uh, it needs to be site control of a particular piece of property, and that's a time sensitive issue that uh, you know the Mr. Valdez is moving forward as as we speak, and so look forward to to doing this you know within the next uh, you know. 60 days uh, less actually, I think it's, you know, 45 days to ensure that, you know, we've got, uh, you know, the seller on board and then, you know, Mr. Valdez can begin to work with the financers to start issuing the bonds and, and really get to work. So appreciate your consideration. All right, thank you, Mr. Trujillo. Any questions? Any other questions uh, from the commission? Actually, I do, Mr. Chair. I'm going to have to put Mr. Valdez on the spot if we could. <laughs> hey, Billy. Uh, uh, for the record, my name is Leo Valdez. I am with the Municipal Capital Markets. I'm the financial consultant to Rio Riva County in regard to this matter. So, my question is just regard with the timing um, of the bonds and the fact that. I mean, is, is there essentially a sunset clause on the voters' um, approval of that bond? Uh, yes, uh, the voters, the bonds are authorized for four years. So we have to sell all the bonds by November of, of next year. However, we really don't ever want to do that because it's all the process. Right now we're assembling the team. We have a project manager, we have advisors, they're going to advise us on the number of beds and the size of the recreation facility. Uh, we're in the process of also completing hiring an architect. So getting back to your question about a master plan together with all those individuals, we're going to take that parcel of land 
and try and set it in there with respect not just to the building, but the parking, the traffic. And I think the traffic is an issue we've talked about extensively. Is that the budget? The budget, you know, we're dealing with, uh, we do have uh, $12 million in bonds that are approved by the voters. Uh, the county also was approved for a million dollar grant to go towards the purchase and or construction of the project. Uh, that's where in the process we're looking to uh, finalize some numbers by April 1st. Uh, we're planning to submit our application to New Mexico Finance before the uh, end of April. And that would lead us to a closing for the first phase of the funding on August the 1st. I mean, it sounds like a long time in our in our business. That's tomorrow. That's your question. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And that because again, it's the timing. I'm assuming the grant that the county received also has a subset on it that it has to be use it or lose it type of situation. Also, four years. 2024. Two years. Yeah, but, but uh, still, we you know. Actually, it's the bigger issue is getting the bonds sold. Right. So my last question is related to the bonds. And uh, and excuse me, it's, it's not totally relevant, but I'm just curious. And I think in my mind, it is affecting the timing of this. Um, and with the Fed looking at raising interest rates, does that raise the rates of the bonds that the city has to pay back? If rates go up, it definitely would increase the rate the county would, uh, with the debt service of the bonds, which would in, impact the taxpayers. Okay, so thank you for that. So there, and I just want to make that clear to the rest of the commission. There's other, besides just doing this, there's a, other things at play here. Yeah. Um, in order to get, and really what we're trying to do is find a permissive zoning for this. Um, One of the reasons I mentioned your Mexico Finance Authority, uh, they're a AAA rated entity, and the money they would lend to the county at, is probably at the lowest interest rate any entity within the state has, which obviously impacts the taxpayers to have a lower tax payment. Uh, plans are probably going to sell maybe six million of the bonds or more, depending on what the architects and consultants tell me we need. So we don't want to have the full impact. Then maybe perhaps the following year we sell the rest. We don't know that number yet, and we're working on the budget as we speak. Today, we spent a considerable amount of time going through a lot of the costs, the soft costs, the acquisition, and, and other matters related to this transaction. I'd have to say that the county has, in the last six, seven months since the new county manager, this project has moved uh, a lot further on than we're, we had to use. But time is running now. November of 2023 is tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Valdez. Appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Wright. Any questions? Final questions? All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, and thank you, um, our representatives from, from Yoruba County. I know it's been a long night. Um, sometimes this is how our process works. So. <laughs> Uh, appreciate you being here and um, and participating and explaining um, explaining your case. So at this time, um, it's 10.08. We'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Um, and I would just like to also mention that uh, I'd like to thank Rio Riba County for their efforts. Obviously, this is to fulfill a community need uh, in our valley since the um, there's currently a lack of uh, skilled nursing facilities for our elderly folks in the valley. So thank you, uh, Rio Riba County, for, for stepping up to the plate and for the voters for approving this bond. Um, I think it's definitely filling a community need. Uh, with that said, um, the criteria that we utilize in evaluating this request um, has been responded to by staff as well as Rio Riba County. Um, and I'd like to say that um, it was well thought out um, and I find all the criteria issues that we must uh, consider in our deliberations have been addressed 
Um, I know to my satisfaction, there might be different, different opinions from other members of the commission, but I just wanted to state that before we go ahead and take the vote, because ultimately we got to use the criteria uh, in evaluating uh, this case and taking action on it. Um, I do recommend a couple of conditions that I did mention earlier, um, that it be tied to uh, ownership by the county and that it be tied to bond question at hand for a rehabilitation um, hospital, if I use the correct language, but we'll, we'll figure out the correct language for sure, uh, depending on how the commission wants to move forward here. So thank you all. Um, so do we have any motions from the commission at this time? Mr. Chair, I make a motion to uh, be Commissioner Casalos. I make a motion to be approved and rezoned with the, condi the conditions that you stated. Thank you, Commissioner Casalos. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Commissioner Vigil. Uh, do we have any? Discussion. Question on the motion is rezone to what? To the B3? To B3, yes. Okay, just for clarity of the motion. Okay, so the motion is to rezone of the property to B3 with conditions that the county will assume ownership. And the second condition is that it be utilized for a Rehabilitation, let me use the correct language, hospital, is that correct? It's skilled nursing, it's skilled nursing and rehabilitation hospital. <coughs> Thank you, skilled nursing and rehabilitation hospital. Does that, uh, is that adequate for your motion, Commissioner Casalos? Yes. Yeah. But just for clarification, Again, sorry, but is a recommendation for approval. This body cannot approve the zoning. So let's let's start with it as um, recommend recommendation of approval of case number twenty twenty two dash three. Rezone request, Ririba County. On behalf of property owner, request rezone a vacant land at the intersection of Kaya Hacienda and Kaya Chamisad, UPC 1 047 121 364 090 to Central Business District E 3 with conditions that the county will assume ownership and that the use will be, use of the property will be for the purpose of a skilled nursing and rehabilitation hospital. Okay, did we get a second? I seconded it. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Rio. All right, any further discussion or clarification? Thank you for the clarification. Uh, I do have discussion, Mr. Chair, but if there's any other commissioners. Any discussion? Commissioner Wright, you're on. Um, so again, this is just a recommendation from this body. Um, and actually, I don't think B3 fixes it. Um, I think there's missing information. Um, I think it's critical. The UPC that we're referring to, according to the records of the Rio Riva County Assessor, referred to a 14 acre parcel. I get it's two different parcels. It's not a multi part polygon. Um, I actually do this kind of mapping for um, the county a little bit south of here. Um, I think the survey that, that's in hand should be ready and prepared for the city council. Um, 
I mean, we did see it referenced in the, on about half of an eight and a half by 11 page um, in an appraisal. But I think the governing body needs to be super clear in what's getting rezoned. Um, and that these are lots of legal record. Again, it appears, can't see it here, um, but it appears that was a plat approved by the city. Uh, the one that we referenced on the record. Um, and that's a thing It's still, this is within the planning and planning jurisdiction of the city of Espanola, even though it's rear County. county. Um, I think the issue of the traffic lights is a big thing and the infrastructure that's in there. And I would encourage as well that there be some discussion of looking or working with the owner to the south and perhaps seeking the easement through there to get additional access to Riverside, given the apartments, Darren's place, a stool, and this silver tsunami of elderly rehab patients that's coming down the road because of our aging society. If you look at the census figures, there's this balloon of, uh, quite frankly, people my age. Um, that that the citizens of the state and the county are going to have to take care of um, in the city. Um, so again, I, I don't think this is ready to go yet, but I also recognize the urgency. Um, so I will be voting against this recommendation in the hopes that uh, the city council and the, and the governing body of the uh, Rio Riva County County Commissioners take a good look at some of these issues. I think this is a huge thing for the community and the county. Um, I think ROI is appropriate. And if you actually read that, this is a district intended to provide a place for those type of institutional and commercial activities that require separate buildings and building groups surrounded by landscape yards and open area land space and aesthetic requirements of these uses make them desirable. Um, that's the perfect zoning for this. Granted, what's in there and the vision from 40 years ago was art galleries, assembly halls for nonprofits, libraries, museums, music conservatories, and site built single family homes. A mixed use development in here could have huge benefits in a public-private partnership and actually be a huge economic stimulus to both the city and county, but also be a really great asset to our city. Um, and again, that's never come to fruition, but a one-word edit to put, actually three words that we have to match the bond, to put that as an allowed use in here, and this problem solved. Rezoning to central business district zoning for 10 acres of vacant land surrounded by other vacant land and some other different mixed uses doesn't make sense. This should be a transitional area, an ROI. It should be a live workplace. What if there were apartments right next to this hospital where the employees could literally walk to work and walk across the street to the food chain. And we don't have traffic. And that is one of the arguments for solving the traffic problem that we have. Um, and it's, you know, let's think out of the box on this, do it quickly. But given that, and again, this is just a recommendation from my commission, but I, I'm going to vote against the motion, but it's going to the city council anyway. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's my discussion. Thank you, Commissioner Wright. And I don't disagree with anything you said there. Uh, I just think, yeah, our, our code is, it is what it is. And we're trying to improve on that uh, to make it clear. Hopefully our future exercise of rezoning can help address some of these issues. Um, I think for now, with the conditions, um, we can ensure that the uses as proposed um, um, are are what um, the applicant has has is is uh, 
is intending. Um, also, as far as like the infrastructure needs, the traffic and the utilities and all that, of course, those are all issues that are will need to be addressed by design professionals, as Mr. Trujillo had mentioned. Um, and that's you know forthcoming in in the next step of this process. So um, look forward to to that. Um, but thank you for those thoughts, uh, Mr. Wright. Um, are there any other discussion comments from the commission? All right, hearing none, seeing no hands. Director Hussein, please call the roll. Vice Chair Anissa Martina. In favor of the motion. Mr. Vigil. In favor of the motion. Mr. Wright. Against the motion to recommend rezoning to B3. Ms. Quintana. Against the motion. Sons. In favor. Chair Eric Martinez. In favor of the motion with the conditions presented. Motion carried. All right, thank you, Robert. Motion carries three to two. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, Mr. Sanchez, Rivera County Manager, thank you for your time and your consideration. Thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Ms. Sanchez. Mr. Trujillo, Mr. Valdez, we appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. All right, folks, uh, we're on item number eight, a couple of minutes. It is 10.21 p.m. It's 10.21 p.m. Would the commission like to continue? I'm okay to continue, but can we take another short break? Or if we want to, we just have administrative <laughs> items left. But it might be wise to get them off the table. That's my question. Commissioner Wright, say that again. I said I, I'm in favor of trying to get our administrative items off the table, but I would like a short break. Um, I think it's important we do that. Because um, uh, we might not be here to approve them, right? <laughs> yep. I, I hear that. <laughs> Just say it. Let's get it done. Don't, pass them. Don't push it down the road, but if we can have just a super short break. <laughs> Please. Well, we have five spirit. minutes. Well, no, we do we'll have to be back go. at ten twenty-eight. That's a discussion. Ten twenty-eight. Five minutes. Ten twenty-eight. I just have a, a, a point of or a point of order. It says ten p.m. on the adjournment time. With that, this this one. Is quite a yeah. I should have a dinner here. <laughs> I should have put the camera up. Maybe no, no, it's in the back. Yeah. This is weird for the person. At least you should. What you should.
All right, are we ready to go again? People have no idea. Hello. I think you're just checking my name. Let's go ahead and move on to item number eight approval of minutes for the February 10th, 2022 meeting. Are there any changes from the commission? Mr. Chair, uh, just a couple, but otherwise they're just like super good. And again, they're not paginated, which would be super helpful right now. Um, I, okay. <laughs> yes, of course. But, uh, okay. Yeah, it's 25 pages a minute. Well, one, Mr. Chair, was a clarification on one of your statements, which mm -hmm. is on page six. That begins with they continue to, to discuss the housing standards. Seven paragraphs down. It begins with Chair Martinez and ends with the word structure. It said he mentioned the cost plan being part of their code. Did you intend to say cost plan? And if you don't remember, it's okay. Sorry, this is hard. What page was that again? That's page six. That is by my account. But it begins that they continue to discuss the housing standards. The first on the hard copy packet. I don't know if you had it and it printed differently. Yeah, I have it in front of me. Can you? Can we pull them up to see these as we go? Yeah, that'd be helpful. Do I have them? A... Yes, we're, we're pulling up. Okay. Yes. You said page six? Seven. Commissioner? Seven. Okay. Oh, I'm so, sorry. Page four, page four, page four. Sorry. Of the minutes. Of the minutes. Two pages back. This is why we need pagination. I passed both terms and I actually did not check it. And it got there. Give me my word next to me. We'll get it straight. Sorry about that. Well, we need to mark them up. And, yeah. I have told them that you mark the pen, so at least you have it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, page four. Can you read the paragraph again, Commissioner? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, on page four. The internet is not cooperating, so because we're working on actually a seller network instead of our regular network, and this is like a backup internet, so we're not in the internet stream. So if we turn off our videos at this point, will that help? I don't know. I'll pair mine off. I mean, that's stuff we're not trying to stream to YouTube. I don't know. Uh, paragraph 8 says, Chair Martinez stated it would come down to the state. It's how the paragraph begins, but it's the last sentence in that paragraph. You mentioned the cost plan being part of their code as well as the health and safety issue. I didn't understand the cost plan. Yeah, I want that corrected. If not, I'm, I'm okay with it. But I just thought I'd bring that to the chair's attention. There's only a couple of other edits, that's all. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. That that does seem out of out of whack there.
Yeah, we might just strike that out. I'm not sure what, I can't recall the intent. Strike. To strike up the cost plan. You have any others, Commissioner Wright? Uh, I'm not sure how you want that read. You want to strike on the sentence or just he mentioned the plan being a part of their code? Strike the word cost. Cost plan, I would say. So he mentioned the he mentioned being part of their code. Is that how it should read? Something like that. Okay, so Again, strike. I can't remember exactly the, the okay. context, but cost plan is out of place. Yeah, it made no sense to me when I saw it, so. Um, the other one. Okay. I was looking. I want to let it go because the spelling change is in there, but that, that's on page six for Mr. Scott Wynn with spelling. That should be on the record with the city. Um, so on page seven, and again, I mentioned this before, but it's Commissioner Wright made an affirmative motion on case 20. 22-1, uh, I prefer so they're easier to see that the conditions actually be listed with the conditions, insert the number one, that all gas and electric plumbing inspections be provided to the city. And that would be contingent upon the cert certificate of oc occupancy and that number two, the applicant must attach the city services to include water, sewer and waste collection and again just to do this this is a motion these are conditions of approval that end up in the findings um it's important they get numbers that way uh next one is page 14 and again we're going to deal with the findings on this case here in a moment. Uh, but again, this is the paragraph that begins old business. December 9th, 2021 meeting the approval of final decisions. Case number 21-12. In the middle of that paragraph, it says he stated the precedents that were on the October 8th, 2020-20. Strike the second 20. Planning and Zoning Commission unanimous vote, blah, blah, blah. It goes down um, to cite the governing body by unanimous vote denying the approval of proposed city investment bill ordinance, number 20. Strike the words investment bill. Following page on the opposite side where Chair Martinez pointed out that they had edits in addition and asked if there was a notion that should read motion. And I believe, I'm sorry, page 21. which is a long blocky one. Um, are, they could fix that by very simply, by carefully wording, it's in that paragraph. In the middle of that paragraph, their sentence says, allow them to do modern zoning, mixed use zoning, and live workspaces. That should read live, work spaces and believe it or not i think that's it
as that was. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Wright. Thank you. That, that was. Any other amendments by the commission? Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Commissioner Quintana. Yes, um, I tried to keep count just like Commissioner Wright, but uh, I counted as page 10, but the easiest way to find it is at the bottom. It says October 14, 2021. So if you go up to the top of the page and one, two, three, four, five, I'll call it in the, uh, the heaviest uh, paragraph number five, I believe that is, go sort of to the uh, close to the end where it says Commissioner Wright and second by Dinah Quintana, that should say Commissioner Quintana. And then on the following page, one, two, three, four, the fourth paragraph, go to the, what looks like maybe like the second to the last sentence. She stated that she was not sure that she attacked it with the fire department. <laughs> That's supposed to say attached it. Where are we? I don't know if <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> a, a tactic the and attack it, the commissioner. She stated that she would have thought that she would have been talking about giving hard standards. Yeah, I like to use the fire department as my means of attack. <laughs> <laughs> Any attached read what? Attached. Attached. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any others? Any others, Commissioners? They do have one at the beginning. Um, let me find it. It's on page two, the second paragraph, so it says Chair Martinez stated. So the last sentence. He explained that the applicants had been provided notice that it was going to be removed. Although there was some miscommunication, um, I think the intent there was that he explained that the applicants, he explained that there were attempts to provide the applicants notice We'll actually read, he explained the attempts. That there were attempts to provide the applicants notice that it was going to be removed. Attempts to provide. Gotcha. All right, that's all I got. Is that it? There are no further amendments. I move to approve with all the amendments cited by the commission. The minutes for the sick. We got a motion to approve the February 10th, 2022 minutes by Commissioner Ray and a seconded by Vice Chair. Anissa Martinez. Uh, any further discussion? All right, roll call, Director. Commission Chair, Ms. Martinez. 
In favor? Commissioner Nisa Martinez. In favor. Commissioner Rio. In favor. Commissioner Wright. In favor of the motion to approve the amended minutes. Commissioner Quintana. In favor. Commissioner Posada. In favor. The motion was passed. Two items. Right. Thank you, Director. We're on item number nine, old business, December 9th, 2021 meeting, approval of final decisions, case 2021-14. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Wright. A um, couple of things. Uh, first paragraph of the matter came before a quorum of the City Planning and Zoning Commission for it was actually multiple public hearings, so it should say four public hearings on October 14th. I'm not sure what the day of the week was. Can find that real quick. Oh, Thursday, duh. It's getting late. <laughs> I was going to say it should be a should be a Thursday. Should be a Thursday. Sorry. <clears throat> On Thursday, October 14, twenty twenty one, and Thursday, December 9th, twenty twenty one. Um, because we did actually hold a public hearing on that day. Um, it just got tabled at that meeting. Finding a fact number five, I don't understand why that's in there, and I think it should be stricken. We weren't, this didn't involve a variance to the specific regulations of Chapter 350 or a variance review, so it's not relevant to these findings. Um, in number six, Correct me if I'm wrong, but number six states that the planning and use department, planning and land use department recommended to deny the rezone request during the public hearing, stating that it is spot zoning. I do not believe that was the case. Was it just the opposite? Yes. So number six should read recommended to approve. The rezone request and spot zoning have nothing to do with it. Strike and stating that it is spot zoning. Uh, in number seven, during the public hearing, uh, it should read Mr. Jose Archuleta and Miss. So insert Jose, the first name of the gentleman who spoke, and Miss Valera Archuleta. The naming property owners appeared and testified, add their testimony, which is actually in opposition to the rezoning request. So I would say that. That should say appeared and testified in opposition to the rezoning request. That was my recollection. Um, and again, I'm not sure about this, but in the conclusions of law, It's stating the Planning and Zoning Commission concludes the applicant has not met the applicable review criteria for approval, for the approval. I don't think that fits at all with the action of the commission. Um, but rather it should state that the Planning and Zoning Commission concludes the application was not in the best interest of the city or the neighborhood in question and therefore recommends denial of the rezoning request. And again, it was a recommendation of denial, not a final action by this body. 
Um, and then on the second page, it says to deny the reason request. I would just strike that with what I just said. And then further, the Planning and Zoning Commission is acting under the authority granted by the Development Code in recommending denial of this application. Strike the words approving this application. We did not approve it and we recommended denial. And I'm also not sure if that needs to be reviewed uh, by Mr. Atio, but it's I, I, I'm a little concerned that these are not signed before we see it. I mean, there's clearly glaring errors in these findings, completely the opposite of what was done. Um, but I think we need to get them approved. So with those amendments, Mr. Chair, I would move for approval unless someone found something else. All right, thank you, Commissioner Wright. Uh, any other commissioners want to chime in? Okay, see none, hearing none. Do we have a motion to approve as amended? So moved. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second by Commissioner Hill. All right. Any discussion? Okay. Roll call, Mr. Hussein. Commissioner Posadas. In favor. Commissioner Quintana. In favor. Commissioner Wright. In favor. Commissioner Vigil. In favor. Commissioner Anissa Martin. In favor. Chairman, Ms. Martin. Uh, abstain. I was not present at this hearing, so. This motion was passed by five to one abstention. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Hussein. We have the next item, number two, February 10th. 2022 meeting approval of final decision for case 2022-1. Same thing, Mr. Chair. I'll go straight to it. Um, Commissioner. Item number five again refers to variance to specific regulations of chapter 350. I don't think that's applicable and should be stricken. We were not hearing a variance. Um, however, it could be, should be replaced with a statement that the Planning and Zoning Commission recognized a 2017 awarding a variance to setback requirements for the same property in question. And if I had that, case number I provided, but I can't find it. We had it at our last meeting, but I think that reference is good enough to tie back to the time of, to the year that variance was awarded to the same property. Or 28, or oh, it's 2017, I guarantee you. That's in the minutes we just approved, but the actual case number from 2017 Probably 20, 70, 20, 70, 30, or maybe more, I'm not sure. Oh, I have it, Mr. Chair. Oh, sorry. We can, we can have staff verify that, and we'll make sure it's in there when the final ones come for signature, Commissioner. Case number 2017 show three. Scott All right, that was quick. Thank you. Um, and then under conclusions of law, basically statement under one, it says that to place the mobile home. I think that should read 
to place the mobile home within the dimension variance grounded under case number 2017-03. And that's all I had on those. But again, the question of no signature from the city attorney. And they have to commission to approve them. Okay. So uh, I do have a question on findings of fact. Uh, item number six, the planning and land use department recommended to approve the placement. Um, wasn't that oh. one, didn't you recommend to deny? It was, I apologize. Director Hussein. The director confirmed that, Mr. Chair, I'm not sure you can hear that. I got it. I missed that one, sorry. Any other changes? Do we have a motion to approve as amended? I move to approve with the amendment cited by Mr. Wright and Chairman Martinez. We second, I'll second it. All right, seconded by Commissioner V. Hill. Further discussion? All right, roll call, Director. Commissioner Salas? In favor. Commissioner Cantana? In favor. Commissioner Wright? In favor. Commissioner Media. In favor. Commission Chair, Ms. Martinez. In favor. Commissioner Anissa Martinez. In favor. This was unanimously passed. All right, thank you folks. All right, next item is item number 10, matters from staff. Um, I know Director Hussein included some items in here as a follow-up to previous conversation about text amendments regarding mobile homes. Um, Director Hussein, I know it's getting late. Um, how would you like to proceed here? It's, uh, I, I would say it's up to the commission, whatever they want to decide will, will go accordingly. Commissioners, would you like to continue on this one or, or table this for, for maybe a next meeting, depending on how things go with our, our administration? <laughs> Mr. Chair, I'd like to honor uh, the directors work on this and actually push through this if we did. Typically in rows and columns, or possibly in a more complex structure. All Would right. you like to hear more? No. <laughs> or I'd say, commissioners, how would you like to proceed? Commissioner Wright recommends we we push along here. I'm I'm fine with it if if you all are okay with it. Well, what are we going to leave the next uh, commission? We got to leave them something. <laughs> We'd like to make a motion to table. Uh, right, table. Let's go. Let's, you know, that is the worst let's case go case forward. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, okay, let's go. Go ahead. Along. Thank you so much. Uh, the, uh, Sorry, Director. Go, go ahead. Right? Go ahead. I'm sorry, there's there's a apparent delay, so go ahead. You got the floor. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Chairman Martinez and the Honorable Member Planning Commission. Uh, this is actually our effort to not probably catch a big fish, maybe just to fix smaller problems and maybe our step towards the bigger changes. And there, in front of you, there, there's just a discussion item. Just get your feedback on it so before we bring it as an action item at the next planning commission meeting. So there are a few changes that we want to recommend and discuss in our chapter of 350 of 
is only going to develop for a city code and, and six fifteen individual mobile homes and mobile home parks, which actually we do not have mobile home park standards in our code. So you want to address two issues. One, the dilapidated structures, especially and specifically the mobile homes and manufactured house, houses. And then introducing the mobile home parks. This is not the comprehensive design standards. It's just certain standards for the mobile home parks that at least we have some wordings to direct and and they have something guidelines for the mobile home parks within our community because there are certain communities who when they place a mobile home we do not have direction for them unless we we just see what zone district they are in so we just want to bring certain standards of that and then one of the biggest issues that we faced last time with the B2, there was no restaurant language, so we just added restaurant in there. So it is in B1 and B2 as well. So when we go to our 615D as a delta, and then we added to promote the homogeneous development in already established stick build neighborhood, planning commission has authority to decide the placement of manufacturing mobile homes should be permitted to promote the well-being of the community because there are some cases where we observe i mean we, we will change the language here to make it more feasible that only stick with home will be allowed and lots lots on the frontage road of our main roads to have more better product to improve the image of the community, we would also we would request that only stick build houses will be allowed on the Riverside Drive, North Riverside Drive, Paseo, and Fairview Way. And if there is a, we have observed there is a stick build house, an accessory structure, or potentially if they wanted to bring a new structure, developers, which is, they always have to come to the planning commission, but it would be a manufacturing house. Sorry, it would not be a manufacturing house, rather, it would be a stick bill just to conform to what actually they have the main development. So, assessment structures and the development unit will be stick bill. And mobile home manufacturing houses without the Department of HUD standards would not be allowed with the city limits. Observing the issues of safety. If manufacturing mobile home placement has a negative impact on the community or neighborhood, for example, decrease in the property values, neighborhood quality, or impact on the neighborhood aesthetics, planning commission has authority to allow or reject the placement of manufacturing house in allowed zone districts. And then we observe that some people do not put skirting on there and do not remove the, the axles and tires, the wheels. So just to promote that, you just add the language that they should place skirting within the 90 days of the placement of the mobile home. That is in skirting number three. And then before we move, if there is any suggestion of this, of course, to the mobile home. Director, a quick question. Um, yes. Has the land use attorney reviewed any of these suggestions quite yet? Yeah. They, so I took some suggestions from them, but final wording has not been taken because we don't know what to bring up. Once we finalize this, we'll take it from there too. Because this is just a suggestion. Discussion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. But the next draft that we'll bring will be reviewed by the land use attorney and our city attorneys too.
probably get rather use that the, the placement for mobile home on the front road would, would be subject to the planning commission approval. Okay. Are, are we at a point to have some discussion or questions, uh, Director? I don't want to interrupt you if you if you need to continue. Uh, yes, I am done. Before we move to the mobile home parks, I'm done. Uh, commissioners, any questions for Director Hussein this time? Um, i just rather go through them all at the end. I do have, based on what we've okay. got, if you want to go ahead and go through mobile home park and then save our questions for the end end. That's my preference, Mr. Chair. Okay, I'm good with that. So go ahead and continue, Director. So for the mobile home parks, it's just that you want to introduce some section from the mobile home parks. You're welcome to suggest if you want more detailed and more comprehensive mobile home park ordinance. And we will be happy to bring that as just our effort to at least have some language so we can have just a basic guidelines for the mobile home parks. So having said that, any applicant must submit a general development plan for any mobile home park showing the location of the building, mobile homes, lighting, control, active screening, land use, general design of parking, both for the residents and the guests. And the minimum area for the mobile home parks is going to be two and a half acre. Why we did that? The minimum, because I looked at the Rio Riva County, they have the minimum area for two and a half acres. So just to have to confirm to the county because we are mostly within the Rio Riva County. That's why we brought this, you know, like a, a average area. And the provision of adequate open space. So the next to that seat would be nine mobile homes per acre. Having said that, that acre is 43,500 square feet. We wanted to have at least 2,000 square feet for every five mobile homes or open space or parks or something that people can enjoy as an open space. And then there will be five feet clearance between the mobile home and the property line and 20 feet of distance between each mobile home. Of two off street parking for each mobile home, which parking shall be paved and concrete with asphalt or gravel. No mobile home should be occupied unless it is connected to adequate utilities, provided with the skirting of a durable material and stabilized and anchored according to the regulation of the housing division of our state. And all mobile homes will be skirted within the 90 days. Any existing non performing mobile home parts shall not be enlarged, intensified, increased, or extended, or occupied. Or occupy a greater area of land for the occupied effective area of the adoption of this mobile home ordinance. And I stand here for, if you have any recommendations, suggestions, or questions. Thank you, uh, Director Hussein. Um, understanding this is kind of a first pass, um, kind of first stab at this. Um, I don't know if we want to get into any great detail given the time, um, but if there's any initial thoughts from the commission uh, that staff can run with. Um, we did have a time after the last meeting where we talked about providing any ideas to the director. Uh, one of mine was uh, the notion of limiting uh, mobile home placement on the frontage of major streets. And that is noted in here. Um, you know, of course, that could be expanded. There's 
several streets noted, I think, uh, Paseo de Oñate, 76, Fairview Lane. Um, it could go on to, to identify others like La Jolla Street, um, you know, on and on. Uh, it, could, it could be conveyed through a map. Um, the other suggestion I had, uh, I think the first time when we were talking about this was, um, and, and again, this could be covered through use of a, of a GIS map, is that any currently stick built subdivisions, established subdivisions, um, be limited to stick built type homes. So it would basically eliminate any uh, approval of placement of mobile homes within an already established residential subdivision that's a stick built, um, no matter the, the current zoning. So that was another idea that I had passed along. So, but um, any other commissioners want to share their thoughts at this time? Have no worries, Chairman. You're fine. Thank you. Commissioner Wright? I'll try to be super quick, super quick. Because uh, I did go through this. Um, so, in the location for restricted districts, um, that's on page two of your presentation. And it, and it flows over to page three. But based on what we just did tonight, B3 isn't included here as a restricted zone. So we're going to have mobile homes right next to our, uh, what was the precise bond language? The skilled, senior. Uh, skilled living. nursing and rehabilitation hospital. Next to our skilled nursing facility. That should be added in here. Um, what should be added again? B3 as a restricted zone for mobile homes. It is restricted already. Not in the copy that we're looking at. And I'm going off the copy we're presented. Okay. It might be in another portion of the and I'm, I'm just saying, saying maybe that's that's just one thing. Should, but should but, but it should be included. Sure. Should be included in everything. Right. And actually, I don't think um Okay, yeah, the downtown historic district, yeah, that's probably right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I do have a concern if you're doing the edits. There are multiple references in at least six paragraphs to a building inspector. Um, that should be changed to a building inspector or someone else. Otherwise, it's going to render this unenforceable if that position doesn't exist in the city. Which one are you referring to? This is the requirements for the use of mobile homes. It's under category D on page three. Building inspector is referred to in paragraph number one. Yes. Number okay. number one. It's also in section E in paragraphs one, two, and three, and also in section G. Any of those sections, if you want this enforceable, should include another position. Um, inspector, okay. Or GIS specialist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Or let's just say Earl Wright. Uh, I don't want to be doing this. <clears throat> Although I wouldn't get paid. Then what, what the hell? I'm in the first bold paragraph, number four on page three. Okay. That should be upper place planning commission and a manufactured mobile home. It should be permitted. Strike is. Number three? <coughs> number four. Okay. Capitalized plan. This is bold the paragraph. You can have is should. It should should be um i appreciate the chair's comment and the intention of doing these frontage roads on yate riverside fairview and state highway 76 
However, that's in direct conflict with B2 zoning, um, where residential structures aren't allowed. And that's not an amendment we're doing. Here. Manufactured housing. I'm just giving you my comments. But I don't want to argue. It's just comments. Um, yeah, there, there, there's a little more thought that we'll need to go into that. That's understood. Yeah. And then in number six, um, if it's a stick built home, only still stick built accessory structures would be allowed. I think you're going to get pushback on that for actually decent metal sheds and the carports that get put up. Um, that may not necessarily be stick built. I think we may need to define what stick built is. In number seven, uh, should instead of would not be allowed, the word shall should be used, shall not be allowed. That's much more forcible and enforceable in the law. Um, yeah, and the other one's just the IE, and that's just typos that don't need to go over that. There's the building inspector comments. Um, in the mobile home parks section on page four, why are we going to two and a half acres? I, I mentioned that the Rigori County has two and a half acres just to perform with the Rigori County. It's the city of Espanola, we can do what we want. Exactly. The current code for an MEDD, which could be overlaid on any district, is, and that's a question I have too. What happens to this section of the code? Because it seems to be in conflict with what's written here. Um, and this is the MHP PUD manufactured housing park and planned unit development zoning. Mm -hmm. That has a three acre minimum and is basically an overlay zone that can be allowed in any district except L1. I'm sorry, LI and HI, light and heavy industrial. That's in conflict with the language we have here. That needs to be um, pulled together. And I would actually recommend if you want to do mobile home parks. You don't have to be Rio Reba County. We're denser than Rio Reba County. I say you need five acres to do that. I mean, what's your intention here? I thought Phil Chacon's thing that we did in, in the old code, and I haven't looked at it with a five acre note. Uh, His parcel is five, five acres. But which was what allowed him to even apply for it. So again, I, I think the two and a half acres is way too small. Um, and it's just encouraging this in the little pockets. If you really want to do a mobile home park, get some acreage. There's still properties that can do that based on the other zoning categories that they'd be allowed in. Um, but what zoning categories that you want to suggest that would be allowed in? Home That's what I'm telling you. Your current code, unless you fix this section of the code, is they can be anywhere except LI and HI. That's what the current code says. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what this says. If you've got a conflict, the city's going to be in a rock and a hard place with an apple if you don't fix both versions of the code. Uh, moving on, Roman numeral five and Roman numeral six, those actually conflict between these other, between themselves. At least five foot clearance, I would suggest and say AKA setback between the mobile home and the property line. And then you say there has to be 20 feet from any mobile home and 20 feet from the right of way easement and, in, and 10 feet from the property line of the mobile home park. Those need to be resolved. You have a conflict there. The one thing I would suggest at the end is that is that the city consider because um, we have a section. This would be this would be Roman numeral ten. We have a section that says non any existing non-conforming mobile home parks shall not be enlarged, intensified, increased. Totally agree with that. I would suggest that the city put 
a sunset clause in there that essentially you can't say you can't outlaw them right away, but you can absolutely enact a sunset clause that any existing non conforming mobile home parks um, shall be allowed to operate until 2032. And at that point, they have to come into compliance or get converted from the mobile home park. I mean, it could be it could be a 10 year thing. I just threw that date out there. It could be a 10 year thing. It could be a 15 year thing. But you don't take away that existing property right. And again, if those things depreciate, you actually get rid of them. So we were not essentially, I just, just want to put out there, we're not essentially restricting them. We're not we're just restricting them to enlarge. I understand. What I'm suggesting is you sunset them. Oh, I completely understand what you have there and totally agree with it. But I'm saying go a step farther and sunset the non conforming uses. That is legal under case law in state statute in New Mexico. If you really want to address the problem, get serious for the sunset clause. Um, as far as the other one, I see the fix that restaurant was added to B2. But again, I would still prefer what was in the code that when I started as a commissioner is that any, rather than just saying that, you say any use permitted in a B1 local commercial district. And I would strike what's in what used to be in there, except for mixed use buildings. I think you need to allow mixed use in commercial. And that fix isn't in here. But any use permitted in B1 should be allowed in B2. And then this amendment works. Then why we should have, should not have, I'm just, just, just curious, why do we have then B1, B2? Why don't we just say B1 and then just take it? It's broken, okay? Let's fix it. So right now, I'm also now not allowed to operate a bank in B2. Where are the banks in this town? There, there are banks that goes to that. I'm not allowed to operate a bakery goods store, a bookstore, a camera shop, any of these things that aren't listed in B2 that are allowed in B1. I'm not allowed to do that in B2. Why? Let's fix the code and add what was should inadvertently struck it. I, I and allow the use. B1 is a more intense commercial use. I mean, sorry, B2 is more intense commercial use than B1, correct? Correct. What was wrong with the old code? Why can't you just allow that? And again, it's just my recommendation. I don't want to get into an argument. It's late. But that fixes this. And it's the same thing. I would suggest based on our communication and actually my conversations with the county attorney when he left, they'd rather be in ROI zone. Why not fix that right now and add hospitals to ROI use tables? These are simple, simple fixes that we could do right now. Simple text amendment. This could go forward. Well, it wasn't an action item here, but I'd be willing to hold a special session to look at another draft of this, get it adopted by a quorum of the sitting commission, and that way you can take it to the, to the governing body, whoever said I don't know if they're meeting the 22nd. There's no way we can do by that, but we can certainly have, you can have tax amendments before the governing body in April. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Ray. I think a lot of those suggestions are, are good um, and consistent with our our prior case, I would say, since we're doing this, we might as well might as well add skilled nursing facilities in ROI as well. That's a simple add-on. I agree. Yes, um, do it. So, yeah. 
So let's, let's do that. Skilled nursing facility um, or hospital, though, or what? He could he asked for you to repeat it, Mr. Chair. Sorry. Oh, thank you. All right, uh, Commissioner Quintana. I just want to go back to page three to further uh, discuss item number six. Commissioner Wright, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and if you like what you're saying. We were talking about when we sat down and listened about this accessory buildings, and I don't think we can call it anything else. We were talking about if somebody wanted to put a second residential building on the top. That is not a law if they can have only one dwelling unit. Remember when we cited the example that we have somebody, a family home on a larger lot, and we wanted to put the daughter at the back of the property and put another one there? Is that what number six is? Correct. So the, the, the reason is, the second dwelling unit comes to the planning commission. That's not an administrative approval. However, here in City of West Kentucky, who come to that permit is proper, how long they're like, oh, well, this is here. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we, we, I mean, if that happened in the history, we can't probably fix that, but legally, it will come to the planning commission. The planning commission can definitely say, okay, no mobile home system. If you want to put it in secondary structure, secondary or second dwelling unit, it will be a state level. It was my impression when you spoke that if the existing structure was cited, then the second structure had to match the same construction. That is correct. Okay. So, so Commissioner Wright was talking about carports and things like that. Then he's talking about the assistive structure. Yeah. So is this is the uh, difficult word here accessory, and should we identify it as second living or residential dwelling unit? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that, that makes sense. But People, this may be the in contradiction with our development table that says developing only one development unit. That we have to add the subject to approval of the planning commission. Mm -hmm. You just get very request. Trust me. It's at probably about six of them over the last 16 years. The request for a second dwelling unit that came into this commission. And so I generally got approved. Did he, that was a legit case. Hmm? That was that was a legit case. No, I'm talking about my history in sitting here over 16 years and took probably six approvals like that. By previous commissions. It happens to say. Is there any other recommendation from any member of the commission? Nope. It's a good first, I think it's a good first start, good input from the commission. I think we're all starting to fade here. <laughs> I know I am. What was your clue? You can see me talking. Commissioner Quintana kept yawning. <laughs> so thank, thank you, Director. Um, this is a good start. I think it, it'll deserve uh, some more review. Uh, please take the suggestions given tonight. Um, if you want to proceed to getting some input from the city attorney as well, um, yes. that would be, I think that would be appropriate. Um, so again, great first start. I think uh, we have a little more work to do, maybe a, another review or two, and then we'll, we'll take it from there. Sounds good. 
Thank you, Member of the Commission and Mr. Chair. I really appreciate your suggestions and recommendations. All right. Thank you, Director. All right. We're on item number 11, matters from the Commission. Uh, are there any matters from the Commission? Well, just in regards to this, is there any way they could be ready before the next meeting? These legal review and. Uh, it may not be because I have to double check the clerk's office, but I think it's two weeks of notice that anybody would want to change anything in the code. I have to put it in the coordinates, I have to put it in the paper. And, and just to public notice during the process, or it may not be possible. I'm not sure that's true with text amendments. But it might be. It, it, it might be. It's, but it just just curious. And I put you out of the gun to get it done. What, what I would recommend is wait till April. What, what I would recommend is Sorry, Commissioner Ray. Um, what I would recommend is that we ask staff to work on this at the earliest possible time so we can see it again. I think that would be appropriate. Yes, they, well, we'll probably bring an action at our next, next meeting. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, any other matters from the commission? Just to clear up our noticing, I'll deal with that. With the director after we're adjourned. What, what was that, Commissioner Wright? Just to clear up some noticing, I mean, I got handouts for the commission, but to get that done, we were at the risk of not being able to hold the hearings tonight because of the way it was noticed. Yeah. Was yeah, there, there were some discussion specific. about that prior to the meeting. Oh, um, I'll hand these out after adjournment. Yeah, we got we, some old copies. Okay. Thank you. Well, and thank you, Commissioner. Sorry I couldn't be there with you guys tonight. Um, but um worked out well. Thanks for getting the technology worked out. Uh Robert and Mohammed. Um we're not sure unless anybody has special insight about how the new administration is going to, um, you know, work with this commission. Who knows? I don't. <laughs> um, so maybe we'll see you next time. Maybe we won't. I don't know. <laughs> but you all been great to work with, regardless of what happens. So. <laughs> Thank you. It's been an honor. Thank you all. Have a good night. Absolutely. Pleasure to work with each and every one of you. Yeah. Likewise. Thank you all. You've been you've been great. Um, so with that, we'll we'll move on to adjournment. Motion to adjourn. We got a motion by acclamation. All in favor. Bye. Say bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. Have a good one. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Bye. All right. Shut her down. See you guys around. Don't run me over. See me hitchhiking on the road. <laughs> or just plain surveying. Good night. Yeah. Oh. Oh.